Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to Brownville. <laughs> so glad that you could be here today. I'm Jenny Williams. I'm Chad Beasley. And we're just excited to kick this off um, today. We have not had an awards banquet for what, four years? We had one, uh, what was it, early 2020, about three months after Jen and I came over to EXP <laughs> and haven't had one since. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so we're um, super excited to bring this back and our state leadership council has put this together and uh, um, we're gonna recognize them in just a second. But before we get started, let's talk about a couple of rules. We've got coffee um, uh, out and about now. I know some people were asking about that. So um, if you wanna come and go, we are packed in here tight because we sold out of 100 tickets. We were only gonna open this up to 100 people and it sold out immediately. So then we opened up a bunch more and that's why we're so packed in this room. <laughs> So, um, but it gives you an opportunity to get to know your fellow EXP agents across the state. So we've got door prizes that we're going to be giving out at the end of the day. And then you'll see this piece of paper in front of you that says, you know, get 10 names. This is for you to um, uh, meet people, write down the, the names and area and phone number um, of somewhere else, someone you haven't met yet and uh, write your, fold it, write your name on it before the end of the day. And we'll have a bucket where we'll collect those for door prizes. Take a picture of it so you've got everybody's info. All right, so. This so. is a way we're, we're giving y'all permission to mingle and get each other's information because that's the beauty of these things is we're, we're ripping the Band-Aid off uh, so that it doesn't have to be so awkward. So get names, get phone numbers, meet people. That's the beauty of these things is you get to network with people from all over the state and find new referral partners so yes the one the thing digits. one thing that i love about exp is how many inside referrals that we do we do so many more than any other company i've ever been with and um i love that and, and you experience the same absolutely thing. all the time and i know chris and chris over here get lots of referrals from all over the place in tuscaloosa and you know i know lots of others i know we've sent referrals to to auburn and We've gotten referrals from different places, so it's, it's, it's great. So get to know these folks. Love it. So Chad, um, tell us just a little bit about, you know, some of the things that you and Jen have experienced that you love about EXP. So after 19 years at, at Remax um, and about 22 years in the business, Jen and I moved to EXP in uh, September of 2019. So we're about four and a half years um, into this journey now. And it honestly has been life changing. I know a lot of you feel the same way. Some of you that maybe are just experiencing EXP, you're early on in your EXP journey, um, you're, you're gonna see. But um, I, I was talking to uh, Kristen earlier and you know, people, I think, until you experience um, what EXP offers and what we collectively as a group offer, you, you can't really understand it. You can see in black and white what EXP offers on paper and all the great benefits, which is what made us come over. I mean, we were excited about the potential of revenue share. We were really excited about the, the stock awards and you know, at the level we were producing, we, know we, we knew we would come in and we would hit Icon every year. And so I was real excited after having a box full of dusty trophies in the, in the basement from Remax, actually getting $16,000 worth of stock awarded to me every year. So that was, I, I knew going to be a, a big change for us but the beauty is the collaboration. I mean, it's, it's all of you in this room. It's, it's what we do every day with talking with other agents and we're jumping on Zoom um, meetings and we're, uh, we're just all helping each other out and, and opening our playbooks and helping each other be better, better agents. And that has been the game changer for us. I mean, it, it truly has been like nothing I've ever seen. Um, 19 years at Remax, love the people, love my broker didn't have any reason to leave other than this platform, but coming over here, the collaboration has been the best part of it. It really is. Um, our people are what make this company so awesome. And that includes our leadership as well. So if you are a uh, member of our state leadership team, if you would please stand up. I'm over here, away from the clicker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And when I say they have put their uh, money and blood, sweat, and tears into making this happen today, I mean, Kristen even ordered y'all all a free gift. <laughs> <laughs> she just wanted to make sure y'all left with something really nice, and uh, she had all of this done. So everyone has really poured into today. So make sure to, to thank them when you get a chance. And, of course, it works when we test it. <laughs> It did something. It did something. And it's not doing anything else. I got it. Okay. All right. And we want to thank our sponsors um, uh, for, for being here and supporting us. Make sure that you send them referrals and business um, because they spent a lot of time and money and effort. Look at the gifts everybody brought y'all today. I mean, amazing gifts. So we definitely want to um, thank them by sending them some business. And uh, the first uh, sponsor we want to recognize is Atlantic Bay. So um, do we have our Atlantic Bay partners here? I know Brian was just in here. <laughs> They're outside the door, maybe. Oh, they could be outside the door. Well, there's a quick video that Scott, he couldn't be here, but he did for y'all. The 2024 EXP celebration of the top performers of Alabama. My name is Scott Moulton. I am with the Redmont Mortgage Group of Atlantic Bay Mortgage. I apologize for myself not being there today, but we have a lot of other folks here, and I encourage each one of you meet the folks from Redmont Mortgage of Atlantic Bay Mortgage because we are here to help you. We have different tools that can help you grow even bigger than you already did. But I wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate each one of you. 2023 for a lot of folks was a down year and you all showed that with hard work and perseverance, you can overcome anything and still have a tremendous year. So congratulations on a great year. Keep it up and let all of us know anything we can do to help you. And all of our sponsors are located along the back wall here. They have the tables here along the back. So make sure that you um, thank each one for being here. And uh, definitely, if you have a referral, leave them one today. So thank you again. And we're gonna hear from some of our other sponsors throughout the day. So this is our state leadership team. And y'all, this was the production for um, 2023 for all of our agents. That is incredible. And yes, I've got noise makers out here. I need some tambourine, yeah. <laughs> so two, over $2 billion in production from EXP Alabama. That is absolutely incredible. I think everybody in this room knows how hard 2023 was. There were a lot of changes, interest rates, you know, spiked there for a while and kind of threw a wet blanket on the market. So to put up those kind of numbers is incredible and, and you should all be proud of yourselves. But Chad, all we do is recruit. That's right, that's right. <laughs> no. But there's that. <laughs> <laughs> now I think for most of us, and I can speak for myself, we came here to sell and we came here to take it seriously. Absolutely, I mean, I came to EXP, Jen and I moved to EXP for a platform that allowed us to just keep doing what we were doing, which was serving our clients and selling real estate at a high level, but to gain more benefits and set our, ourselves up to have a future, to be able to get off the hamster wheel one day and not be one of those 80 year old realtors that are like, just one more deal, you know? <laughs> so, um, and so, yeah, I mean, selling real estate is, the, it, the model doesn't work if people aren't selling real estate. And I'll put in a plug for little old Chelsea, Alabama, EXP Realty is kicking everybody's tail in, in Chelsea. And uh, it's really cool uh, to watch that happen and to see the numbers grow and our market shares growing market by market. And it, it's cool to see that. So much fun. So yes, um, my dad is one of those. Uh, <laughs> he just had, um, he's been a realtor for over 50 years and uh, y'all, he's fantastic. He just had his biggest January he has ever had. And the reason I joined EXP is because of him. I'm not going to make because it. Because <laughs> he happening. is 75 <laughs> and he just had his biggest January. <laughs> if he had been with a platform like EXP and had all of the stock um, all of these years, and you know, some of you may be feeling like, oh gosh, it's down, it's down, it's down. 
it was six dollars when I joined. Freddie, you were there with me. It was about six dollars when we joined, you know, and uh, so now it's double. I mean, it's double. So every time we hit Icon and every time we um, uh, get awards from the company that they give us the stock awards for having a first closing, right? Um, it, I am doing better every single day because I've got that forced savings over there. And uh, it, when Chad said change lives, is, this is the only company you can really say that about because I know that Kyra Craft paid off her child's student loans at Auburn with her stock. Um, you know, I bought a car with mine because it was a petty buy to get back at my old broker. Um, <laughs> who kept saying that stock's not worth anything. And I'm like, oh yeah, watch me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we paid for part of a swimming pool. Yes, I mean, and it's not like it's not an above ground pool, y'all. <laughs> it's really nice. <laughs> it's got flamethrowers on it. <laughs> so when it's we say Vegas and Chelsea, <laughs> that's right. When we say life changing, it really is life changing. Um, I know with Gusty's uh, stock account, he was able to um, have a credit line against his and be able to buy flips and investments. So it does keep going and going and going. And we want to just remind you of just how powerful it is to really tap into that and just to see. You might have complaints here and there, right, about certain things about the company. But like my husband always says, shut up. Who else is giving you 16000 in stock? You know? <laughs> So it's just a good reminder of what the benefits are. And this I'm so proud of because this is why we're here. We came to sell real estate and my Lord, y'all sold real estate in one of the toughest years that most people are selling half. Most people sold half of what they normally sell um, in 2023. So again, let's do it. Come on. Woo! 2024 will be better. That's right. It's already, already better. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Bev on tambourine. <laughs> All right. So I want to introduce this special lady to you. I think you're really going to um, love her story. It's an amazing story. And um, we are so blessed to be in business with you, Tanya. So um, come on up to the stage. Test. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> She's so low key. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. Come on. I know. She'll be warmed up in a minute. So we're super excited that you are able to share your story. So tell us a little bit about where you're from. Okay. Um, I know a lot of you in here, so you probably have heard the story a million times. But the ones that haven't heard it, I'm originally from New York. I moved to Alabama. No. <laughs> yeah. Your accent, I totally thought you were from Alabama. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> sure you <he> did. <laughs> um, I moved to Alabama with my husband and my two children. Um, my job wasn't transferable here, but my husband was, so that's why we got here. Um, my husband decided to throw at me one night. He's like, you know what you'd be good at? I think you should try real estate. I'm like, hmm. Why the hell would I want to do that? I don't even like people. <laughs> it's not really true, but that's what I said. And within a half hour of him uh, mentioning that, I went ahead and started looking up to see what you had to do to become a real estate agent. And uh, signed up for classes. And then he's like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, signing up for real estate. You told me to try it, so I'm going to. And got my uh, license in October of 2021. And... How many did you sell your first year? First year was 41. That's crazy. <laughs> In a state I knew nobody. <laughs> right. Nuts. Yes, yes, right? So this is why I wanted you to speak because I want everyone to see what's possible. She came here not knowing anyone at all and was able to I knew to nobody close. except for the realtor, which is Don Jenkins, and she's also part of EXP. She sold me my home. That is the only person I knew. It was her and her husband. Other than that, I knew nobody. <laughs> So how did you get the proper training? Because um, I love this story. I originally went into the world because that's what I was told to do. That's where you're going to get training from. And I started doing all the, the university classes. And everything I learned was SOI. And that's all I kept hearing for, I don't know, about a week. So when my husband came home, 
I looked at him and I said, hmm, I don't think this real estate thing's gonna work. I said, all he keeps telling me is SOI, so I guess we're a SOL. <laughs> <laughs> My exact words. And uh, so I put everything down for probably a couple of days and I'm like, what am I gonna do to make this work? I just did all this work. I just paid all this money and I wanna really do this. And my brain thinks outside the box all the time. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna have to go out and meet people. I don't have no other choice. And I'm more of an introvert. Um, not so much anymore. I am sometimes. If you put me a bunch of people like you guys, I, I still kind of like pull back. But um, so no matter who I met, I just started talking to them. And Jenny knows all the stories. <laughs> Well, and you got mixed up with a mentor, and you didn't have one, so Holly helped you out. Well, she started helping me out when um, I didn't have a mentor at all when I started. I was supposed to get one. I never got one, and I got into a transaction, and I'm like, I don't even know what paperwork I need. Hmm. So I called Holly, and she has been my rock since day one because whenever I needed something, I just thought, hey, Holly, I need help again. What do I need here? After a few transactions that she walked me through everything, I pretty much had it down. I'm a quick learner. And now I'm just her problem child. That's what I tell her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in six-figure intensity, for those of you who've been through it, um, we I started seeing uh, posts like crazy of high points from Tanya Lee. And I'm like, who is this Tanya Lee getting 200 points a day? <laughs> well, Dawn Jenkins, she introduced me to you, not physically, I didn't know, still didn't know who the devil you were, but she introduced me to your group and X team. I didn't even realize I was part of X team. I thought I was on an island by myself. Well, that is a lie because I have all of you. But um, she introduced me to your group and I'm like, okay, what is this? And I had no clue what the points were. And I remember texting you, go, not texting you, but uh, DMing you and, and messaging you're going, what are these points for? What do they mean? How do you do this? Well, that's when I figured out what she was doing. A lot of stuff that she was doing in, in, in that group, I was already doing before then, because I met you in what, February? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was right before Valentine's Day, because that's when I got my original license. And uh, she put a spark into it because she taught me how to take what I was already doing and push it further. And so do you guys, because I've learned a lot from a lot of you guys too. Absolutely, but you're always giving back. You're on the phone with Angela, sharing all the time on the phone with Bev, and Bev calls you the the baller caller. <laughs> <laughs> no, she just tells me I'm not human. I don't know how. But, <laughs> but one of my favorite stories is she um, uh, got pulled over because it was a roadblock um, oh, yeah. by a police officer. Oh yeah. I was with my husband then. <laughs> and she asked him for business and got it. Yeah. I mean. This, pulled, yeah. <laughs> this is what it takes. He pulled me over for, well, they were pulling everybody over, not just me, but I had come from a, a, a for sale by owner. Nobody knew me, so I used my husband as my decoy buyer because I wanted to get into a house that I didn't really have a buyer for, but I possibly did, but I couldn't see the house because I didn't have a buyer. I'm like, okay, you're going to be my buyer today. Well, I ended up selling that house, but when we left there, um, there was a roadside check. So I pulled over and he went through all of my information and I don't know why I did it, but he started walking away back towards his cruiser and I took my truck and pulled it. I said, hey, by the way, since you pulled me over, it's my turn to pull you over. My husband's like, what the hell are you doing? You trying to get yourself arrested? I said, no, I'm trying to make money. <laughs> and I said, I gave that magic question. I said, what three people do you know is getting ready to sell a house in the next 60 days? Well, I got three listings right from that. <laughs> That's incredible. I know. I love husband, it. He's so crazy. good. Yeah, she goes to the listing appointment and goes, holy crap, they want to list three houses. <laughs> what do I well, do? Well, no, that, that one was five. Oh, yeah, that yeah. That was the first one I did over in Double Springs. It ended up being five, which we all converted into one by the time it was all done. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so just definitely get to know Tanya because you will see miracles happen all around this. Um, and she works very, very hard, and she's always willing to help anybody who, especially if you're struggling or, you know, need some encouragement. Um, the very first year, though, she missed Icon by one. Oh, right. By one. Yes. Uh, but I made it this year. So wait a minute. Back that up. <laughs> Your very first year, you only missed Icon and by I one. Would have That's had. selling a bunch of real estate. Uh, That's no. crazy I know. I would have first had year. It, That's but awesome. I had a, my last one was a USDA loan that was supposed to close September 30th. My rollover. Has October. anybody, as a brand new agent, hit Icon their first year in Alabama? I don't know. I can't think of anybody. That's crazy. Know. 
I was so devastated when it got pushed oh. to October 2nd. <laughs> Jay's pointing to me. I did hit it the first year. I said year. as a new agent. <laughs> but you weren't a new agent. No, I, I hadn't sold a house in 10 years. Okay. So I was starting over. Well, you still knew people. He, I know. He, that's why <laughs> he was laughing at me. I knew I had a sphere of influence of 48 people when I started over. So, okay. um, but so amazing. How many are you on track to close this year? I'm trying to do over 100 this year. And I'm, how many listings do you have signed? 77. Woo! <laughs> so I wanted y'all to meet Tanya just to, to, to hear what is happening and what is going on. Um, it is possible. We have to work harder right now. We have to go out there and find those people who are um, ready to sell, right, and ready to buy. It's and not easy, guys. I warn you, it's not easy. <laughs> so what I'm hearing from you is you're not getting in your own way. No. I think that's what a lot of agents struggle with is you hear the things, but you're, you're scared to go do it. You're scared to take action. And We're, you're just out there having the conversations and getting it done and not getting in your own I way. I think because I work with a lot of you guys in here, the lot of things I see is the pullback where normally I'm that way too. I'm not going to lie to you. I was that way way before I got in real estate. I just like cowered out. I never would go to the grocery store by myself. I wouldn't even go to a restaurant. Now I don't care. I just go out there and do it. Um, but I hear a lot of the pullback from you guys. If you get out of your way and start implementing everything you hear, see, watch, because that's what I did my first year is I watched all of you, all the top, top people here. Um, I listened to podcast after podcast after podcast. No, I never paid for anything. I never paid for a coach, but I listened to all the free stuff and I know not everybody's brain works my way, but I would take what they said and try to figure out how to put it into motion. And if I couldn't figure it out, I'd either throw it away or try to find something else that uh, piggybacked that to see how they did it, maybe. Um, but you have to always implement. No matter what you learn, if you don't put it into play, it's not going to work. Me, I'm, I'm always willing to take whatever it is unless it's against my personality or, or my, my morals, I guess. Um, I'm willing to take anything and try it once. I'm willing to try it twice or three times just in case I missed it the first or second time just to figure it out. So just implement. That's all you need to do um, is implement everything you take in. Yay. So give her a big hand. <laughs> While you're up here, would you do us the honor of announcing our first award winner today? And that is our Rookie of the Year. Yes. It's so exciting to have somebody who is brand new get their license and sell a massive amount of real estate. So um, we definitely want to congratulate. Mohammed. Mohammed Farhan. Congratulations. <laughs> Here you go. Ten million in your first year. Yes. Man, that's awesome. And if you want to um, come back and get a, a photo later, yeah. just in front of here, would be great. This is Alan. He's our photographer today, and uh, he's going to take photos of y'all as you get awards. So, thank you so much for being up here and sharing your story. And it's amazing, right? Amazing. So, uh, I can't wait to see what you're going to end up with this year. <laughs> with that being said you know we love new agents because wow when you learn how to sell real estate in 2023 as a brand new agent then you can conquer anything after that right so if you've been in the business for one year or less would you mind standing up <laughs> Mom is like, I'm like. <laughs> Hang in there, y'all. <laughs> this is fun, but you're going to make it. And he who um, hangs on uh, the longest lasts. <laughs> it's a marathon. And that's right. And you've got such a room of support here. So if you need encouragement or you need help with anything, please reach out to us. We are always happy um, to uh, you know encourage and um, you know support you in any way we can oh. 
show. Thank you. All right, so um, Chad, would you like to make this introduction? Well, our, 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 our guest presenter for our, our cappers today is Mary Martin Brown. Um, Mary Martin came to EXP in um, De December of 2019. Yeah, so um, she was actually one of our driving reasons behind coming to EXP because she came to us talking about getting into real estate and where we were at Remax was so expensive for a new agent, we really couldn't help her. Um, and then once we just made, decided to make the move to EXP, um, Jen was on the phone with her real quick going, hey, I think we can help you now. <laughs> of course, I fumbled the ball and didn't leave Remax on that first visit to the broker. Everybody has two start dates. You know, so, um, <laughs> but a week or two later, uh, I, I pulled the plug and we came over and, and Mary Martin jumped in and has done a phenomenal job and is, uh, is just setting the world on fire. So uh, we're excited to have you come up and announce our cappers. Yes. <laughs> We're so proud of her. And um, if you are a capper, if you would um, please come to the stage with your piece of paper in hand and line up over here so that we're going to. Um, have not iconed. Yeah, these are cappers that um, have not iconed. Okay, we're going to recognize our icons um, a, a little bit later, but these are strictly just the cappers that have not iconed. If you wouldn't mind taking that piece of paper that you got at registration with your name on it and lining up over here, that would be great. All right, while they're lining up, I just want to give a quick little introduction. I'm Mary Martin Brown, like they said, and I've been at EXP for a little over four years now, um, and it we're just having the absolute time of our lives. But capping is just the biggest honor, whether no matter what your production goals are at EXP, it should be on your list to try to cap every single year. What that means is EXP takes as much as they can take from you and then they're done. And you keep the rest of your checks for the rest of your year. And that is an incredible honor. Um, and there are just so many companies that don't even have that kind of structure out there, which is mind blowing to me. Um, so it's just, it's an honor today to be able to announce all of these cappers from 2023. Wow, what a line. <laughs> yes, I know, I'm like maybe five, 10. All right. And if y'all don't mind holding your applause till the end, that way we can read through all these names, let everyone get their photos, and then we'll do one big celebratory applause at the end. So, all right, getting started, our first cappers are Clarence and Ebony Graham. Chad. <laughs> Next we have Ashlyn Smith. <laughs> Next we have Allison Beck. We have Martha Gibbons. Kristen McGraw. Kelsey Crump. Teddy Maywall. <laughs> Drew Wilder. Oh. 
Peggy Lucas. Team Chris. Ryan Summerford. Chance Higdon. Chris Atkinson. Erica McCoy. Bev Gallagos. It's just Bev. All right, Carl Heckman. Mo Farhan? Is it Farhan? Farhan? Okay. All right, Jeff and Daphne Cook. I love all the blue. Y'all look great. <laughs> Chuck and Candace Fab. All right. Just you? Okay. <laughs> Linda Pritchett. <laughs> Tony and Jessica Martinez. All right, everybody give it up for our cappers. Thank you, Mary Martin. Yeah, that'd be great. And um, if you want, I would love for us to get a group picture of all the cappers together, but I don't think y'all can fit on this stage. <laughs> I don't think it's big enough. Um, but we do have this awesome sign if y'all uh, want to get your picture made individually. Just ask Alan whenever you get a chance. We're going to do a drawing later, and whoever wins the drawing gets to make this into a necklace, and you get to wear this. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen me picking that up yesterday. I couldn't fit it in my car. <laughs> All right, so now is um, uh, your chance to meet and connect if you haven't already with our brokers and they work lots of hours for us and on weekends as they rotate so um, please welcome to the stage our brokers Holly and Brandy otherwise known as the two people who are responsible for all the dumb things we do <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, it's so good to see real faces instead of avatars. Um, I'm Holly, in case you don't recognize my voice. A lot of people have said to me this morning, I've recognized your voice. So, and Brandy Cook. I heard you cook. Who got up at the crack of dawn this morning. So, um, but welcome. Am I supposed to do the new and improved world? Yes, and I want uh, everyone to know how easy it is to get in touch with y'all. Absolutely. Um, first of all, we are super, super easy to get in touch with. We have a new world. It is a link. You don't have to download the big old world on your laptop anymore. You can actually get to us from your smartphone. Um, yeah, which is so easy. So Holly, is it fully operational now there's fully. no no re we can delete the old program delete, off our computer you can't even get into the old oh, world oh perfect now. 
That's so I tried last week and okay. said, nope, go to the New World. Awesome. So Randy and I are in the New World every day from 8 to 4.30-ish. Um, and all you have to do is come in and you got us. Okay. Let me, let me just say something. Yeah. She's talking about the New World. I have to talk about it. <laughs> if, if you try to get in the New World and you have an issue, please reach out to us. We've only had one agent that tried to get in and had a little bit of an issue. But if y'all don't let us know, we can't get you help. Because we have people that will reach out to you immediately to get you connected and get your problems fixed. The developer. Right. He will call you personally and help yes. you get in. They're wonderful. Yes. Um, Brandy and I met them at EXPCon, and they ran everybody else away because Alabama was the first state to get frame, um, and so we were guinea pigs, and so they were, you know, they were, they love Alabama. So, uh, what's not to love? <laughs> That's right, and it's exp.world. EXP.world. That's how you get in, and it's super easy. Super you, easy. You log in with your EXP email address or your log, whatever your login is for Passport, and EXP Enterprise, and all that. Yes. Okay. And um, you can build an avatar, or you can be a little, I don't know, robot. Lego it man. It's like a thing off wallet to me. It's whatever. Every time yeah. I see the little sweet things, I swear it's a robot. Yeah. You can do that. Or you can, and there's two different ways. You can either um, build you like a regular avatar, or you can take your picture, and it'll try to create you to look more like your picture. I look just like my gray hair and all. Um, so anyway, come see us in the world. If you can't get us in the world, um, you know, call or text us. Okay. We want to help you. That's what so, we Holly. Do. What is what is y'all's preferred method of communication? I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. David, David, plug your ears. David, close your ears. <laughs> He's like, um, yeah. Um, chat, workplace chat. Okay, I have it on my phone. I'm constantly looking when somebody sends me a chat. I see it. And I respond as soon as I see it or as soon as I can. Sometimes I'm driving down the road and I'm do I know, but I do it anyway. Don't do as I do, do hey, as you I got say. your boss and former law enforcement in here and you're telling him yourself. <laughs> he knows me. He, he knows me. So he just shakes his head. She's got a big mouth and she says too much. Okay, um, moving right well, along. Well, but if you do use the right systems, you can get in touch with the right. brokers really quickly. I just pop into EXP World if I ever need anything. She does. I am usually just in front of a broker or an expert care and have my issue resolved within five minutes. Yep. So um, I try to help out everyone else um, with that as well. Um, and uh, we have compliance there and starting next week. Hopefully next week. So this week I talked to one of our lead transaction persons and she is making arrangements that we're going to have a person from transactions on the floor with us. Which and will be awesome. That's great. And sit down with them mm -hmm. just like you do us. Um, I don't know their schedule yet. They're working on their schedule to let me know if it'll be certain days, certain times. Um, but they're going to rotate. It won't be the same person. They're going to rotate it out and take turns, but they're going to help monitor the floor. I just feel like that would help me guys out. I asked him, you shall receive. So we <laughs> yep, it's, it's super important for us, for you to get in front of transactions because one of the things that um, people think that compliance has control over you getting paid, um, and that's not true. That's transactions. Okay, the old um, payment processing. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much You're for welcome. that. And so these are our core values, just as a reminder of the company. Um, me personally, one of the things that um, uh, makes me happy uh, as one of our core values, values is uh, sustainability. And uh, you may not think that's important to you, but I can tell you that I've been meeting with a lot of people lately and Friday before last, I met with a mortgage officer who's been in the business for 24 years, and his mortgage company closed 
surprisingly, in the middle of transactions, and they still owe him $48,000. This is not somebody who just started out. This is not somebody who's naive. Things can happen. And sustainability, to me, is super important, especially when you're faced with a market that is ever-changing. I want to know that my company's doors are going to be open. And with that, they have to make decisions to keep um, uh, no matter what, how the market changes, they have to make decisions that we may not like. Um, and we don't know all the thought and, uh, that went into those decisions um, before they made them. But I can tell you that they make them so that we can continue getting the benefits that we have always gotten. The only change that we have had financially since Chad and I both have been here um, has been e and going up. And, uh, I, you know, we have had I some think that's stock. that's happening pretty much for everybody. Yes, in our and with all the lawsuits, yes, um, it's expected. So I, I just wanted to share, you know, my two cents in a different perspective. Most agents really don't care about that. They only care about what they're getting. But sustainability to me is like a huge gift. And we have zero debt as a company. I love that because yes. our company is making smart decisions every single day. And that's who I really want to be aligned with and who I want to be in business with. And I know many of you do too. Um, and uh, um, what was the other thing I was going to say, Chad? <laughs> well, I had a window into your brain, I will tell you. <laughs> I, and we're the only profitable. That's something that's super <clears throat> important. And yeah. debt free. Yeah, we're debt free and we are actually profitable. And uh, that's what makes more and more benefits come our way and innovations. Like our company keeps buying things to give us as gifts. So I absolutely love that. Um, so I just wanted to put my two cents. And y'all share what your favorite ones are. Well, I'm about to go off script. How many by a show of hands have only been with EXP. So you people don't know. You people don't <laughs> know. Okay, I'm just telling you, I've been in this business a long time and been with several companies, some franchises. This is the best real estate company out there for, um, for agents, they care about you and you being profitable and you being successful. Hands down, hallelujah, amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, preach it. I can do it because uh, I'm just telling you. And I, the company I was with and before coming to EXP on sales meeting, they used to talk about EXP is a fly-by-night because EXP was at the top of the leaderboard for the MLS. Oh, they're a fly-by-night, their stock is a, is a scam. And then I went over here and went, wait, what? Really? Okay, so <laughs> enough have, of that. They have to say that. I guess they because <laughs> we're they're kicking their butts, yeah. and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, and integrity on that is really important to me. Integrity is everything, and it's all I have. And so if I tell you something, you can take it to the bank. Okay? Um, right, Tanya Lee? I'll swear to that. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here you go. You have to use this, I'm sorry. <laughs> So, okay, my I guess favorite thing is is the I guess the um my brain that just went blank. I had this word the, the flexibility that we have as agents. You know, we we do what we want to do pretty much. You know, you work your own schedules. You know, you don't have a brick and mortar. We most of us don't have a brick and mortar that we have to go to every day. You know, we work from wherever we are. You know, and that to me that means a lot to me. And for what I do, I love it. I, I mean, I, I could not imagine anything better. And then I, I love being able to help this many people, you know? I mean, it, it's amazing to me sometimes, you know, when y'all come to us as, you know, with a question or you've, you're stumped on something and then we can collaborate all together and it works out perfectly. You know, I love those stories. I got one yesterday, you know, I had an agent that called and, and was panicking because of a deal that was like falling. And then we talked about it. We talked. She sent me a message last night and thanked me so much for, for the help and just that. And, and I, it means a lot to me. I take a lot of this personally. I shouldn't, but I do. You know, because it means a lot to me to see y'all succeed. Absolutely. 
you know, that, that is, you know, and if, if y'all have a problem, that means I have a problem. You know, it's not just your problem. It's mine too, you know, and I'm going to be there with you and Holly will too. She will be with you until we get to the end of it, you know, whether we have to talk somebody off a ledge and that was what we did yesterday, you know, and, and if that's what it takes, that's what we do, you know. So we're in an ever-changing real estate market. <clears throat> And we have some tiny kingdoms out there with MLSs and associations who think they rule the world. Um, and they're making some decisions that directly impact you. Do I have any T-Town people in here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're getting through it, you know? And um, as a team, we're getting through it. Um, and by the way, I, I said this in state meeting, but I have a big group here, and I want all of you to hear me. If you're selling real estate and you're not in that MLS, you better get it in writing that the seller is going to pay you a commission. Don't trust that the listing agent and the seller will do the right thing, because they don't have to pay you. And we have several of South Alabama, um, MLSs that are not paying agents the way they should. So, just if you're just a little, it's just a little, what do you call it, public announcement. Well, and everybody gets confused about that because we do have a license to sell anywhere in the state. We absolutely do, but we also have the right to collect that from our clients that we represent. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's not guaranteed that a seller owes us the money. So, I know people get confused about that. Yep. Okay. So, all right. You ready okay. for some awards? Let's do some more. All right. Oh, yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they were supposed to be one at a time. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. This award is extremely important to me because it's what we're all about. Um, this, okay. <laughs> this is our culture, EXP culture award. And these three people are prime examples of what that means. Sarah Runyon, Jenny Williams, and John <laughs> McNichol. Where are you? Come on up. John, are you not here? Okay, wait till I talk to him. <laughs> he bought a ticket. He, I know. He does. That's awesome. I know, and he reaches out all the time too. You know, stays connected. Congratulations. Jenny Williams is an animal. Okay, <laughs> she is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> um, Y'all, we owe her this. We owe all of this to Jenny. She is in her element. She does it. And I can't say enough good things about John McNichol. I mean, he just puts everything together, is always willing to help. And um, they are three amazing people. All right, I'm finished. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Woo! So Holly's right. Jenny has worked tirelessly to put this thing together, and um, she even may or may not have pulled a gun on me to make me be up. So. <laughs> we had to have Chad up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm going to pick on David for a second. Uh, just two minutes. Can you come and share with us why we need to be using Zenlist? because I'm actually super excited about this. And for our group, we recently had a mastermind with the people of ZenList, um, uh, and we've got that recording if you want it, but they're very friendly. They'll reach out and do presentations for y'all. Um, uh, 
what I found out about Zenless is super important. I know I'm picking on you. Here. I can't, I can't. If he's here, he's got to be Celebrity with us, guest, right? David Lucas. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wasn't prepared. Okay, we're doing this. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> no, that, that is not happening. Oh, I probably got a, I got a speech somewhere I could probably use. Uh, <laughs> You know, you throw out the long piece of paper. Okay, so when we're talking about ZenList, what that is, is that's EXP exclusives. All right, so remember back about a year ago, a bunch of MLSs throughout the country were, were hacked. Y'all remember that? Yep. People couldn't get into their MLSs. Yep. I think the wonderful Valley MLS was one of those. Yep. Yeah, so we took an initiative at that point to make sure that our agents did not get impacted ever again. <laughs> and we created EXP exclusives. Now, what makes us different than any other company in this country? Can somebody tell us that? What's, what makes us different than, Ke I'll use the names, Keller, Remax, <laughs> Century 21, anywhere, what makes us different? We're one. One, one company. We're one company. EXP Exclusives has started so that you can take your off-market properties and load them so that every agent in this country can see them. So David, explain to everybody what the difference is. So why is Remax, why is Keller oh, Williams not one company? Good point. I think there's a lot of confusion. All that. right, so EXP Realty is one independent company nationwide. Remax are franchises. They're independently owned and operated. Ke Keller, independently owned and operated. C21s, Caldwell Bankers. All of these different other companies are franchises underneath a franchise umbrella, under a company umbrella, which means they cannot share off-market listings with anyone other than those people within their office. We, on the other hand, can load them up to ZenList, which is the platform we're utilizing for eXp exclusives, and share them across the country. So let's say you've got a $350,000 house outside of Montgomery, Alabama, that's four bedrooms and three baths. And an agent in California has an investor looking to spend, oh, I don't know, $1.5 million for rentals. Well, he can come buy five of them out here, or one, or half of one, in Los Angeles. Where are the investors going to find these at? Well, if we put them off market, then the competition, you get to feed the competition. You get to feed the people how we're able to utilize this system. So right now, we have over 8,000 of the 89, of the 90,000, we only have 8,000 people utilize any XP exclusives. And it's very easy to do, except for you AT&T people today, cause y'all out of luck. Um, <laughs> so let's Verizon and T-Mobile folks. Um, if you take uh, that app, either one of the apps, the Apple app or the Android app, when you, when you sign up for it, use your exprealty.com email, all right? We're not letting anybody else in, <laughs> just so you know. You gotta use that email. Now you can update it, like, I'm, you know, I know certain people that have names that, uh, that aren't like what their mom and daddy gave them, that they use from real estate, and that's okay. Uh, but when you sign up, you use the .exprealty.com, at exprealty.com email. It will ask you to pick an MLS. Do not pick your local MLS. Pick EXP Realty. It'll be in the line of MLSs. Pick EXP Realty in the drop-down menu. By doing that, that links you to our platform. We are in the process now of getting all the RETS feeds from all the MLSs that we're in, and those are also gonna load in there. So instead of, you know, <clears throat> gotta be careful on a couple of these. Instead of <laughs> give, putting your client into your local MLS connection who gets hacked every now and then you can now put your client into EXP exclusives especially when we the MLS feeds done after in the second quarter and they can look for their properties there as well now what that also does is it make, allows you to register your client so everybody in EXP knows that if David Lucas is out looking for a house Peggy Lucas is going to be his agent. Well, there's a couple of reasons for that one, but we won't get into that. But <laughs> Peggy would be my agent, so I would be registered under Peggy. So we get all these exclusives, 
that we can that we can work through. So the more that sign up, the more robust this system will be. And the reason we're pushing this hard is because uh, you know AT and and all kidding aside, AT and T went down, right? How much longer do you think it's going to be before more MLSs get hacked? Because that's where the money is right now. So more MLSs are going to get hacked. And so we want to have the opportunity that if we've got all of this data, especially when we get it from all the MLSs, all our feeds, we have all this data and an MLS gets hacked, guess who could push this out to the Zillows and the Realtor.coms if we needed to? We could. Which means we control the data. Which means everybody's got to come to you guys if they want to do business. So the first benefit is it's off-market properties. Second benefit is we'll get MLS uh, feeds into it, and then that way we control the situation. A uh, couple of things, just to give you guys a quick heads up, I'll, I'll bump out of that, and then that way I don't get called back up here, um, <laughs> is uh, Holly, made, Holly made a good statement. If you are, remember, especially with all the commission lawsuits going on, if you are not a part of a MLS, get it up front. Get that commission agreement up front. There is a buyer broker uh, in Skyslope. There is now a buyer broker uh, agreement for you to work with your your um, with your clients. To we split it up. We broke it out. It's a it's a company wide pro, uh, form. We did that so that we can uh, show that because you know we're now popular, so we're named in a lot of these lawsuits. So we want to show that we're separating those commissions out. There's also a writer to a listing agreement in there where you can show, because a lot of our listing agreements have that one blank that says gross amount. That's why everybody's losing. We gotta be sure we can split it out. There's a writer in there for that. And the most important thing I can tell you is, is when your state broker team goes over buyer agency and buyer agency agreements and buyer broker agreements, please attend those classes because the world has changed. Uh, and it's actually changed, you know, what they're talking about is we, We've had folks, and this is not only in Alabama, but throughout the five, re five states that I cover. Uh, we had a couple of agents in, uh, in Oklahoma that closed on a transaction. They weren't in the MLS, and the company refused to pay them. And so they sold, you know, $400,000 houses and didn't get paid because they weren't in that MLS. So make sure that you, that you follow those rules. But EXP exclusives is what's going to help us make sure that we take care of you. And that's going to be the most important thing. And that's what we want to make sure of is that, that we cover you in every way possible to ensure that we give you the best product out there. EXP.world forward slash AL broker room is how you go to the state broker room. And yes, please remove the, the, the old world from your computers, free up some good space. Uh, if you are an, an Apple user, make sure you use Safari for exp.world. If you're one of those other people, <laughs> I don't care what you use, I'm um, sorry, uh, use Chrome. All kidding aside, use Chrome. So if you're uh, Apple, use Safari for, to get into exp.world on your phone. And if you're an Android, use Chrome. But it's an easy way to get in there. The broker teams are in there all the time. And Expert Care Concierge is currently is almost up to 24 hours a day. So if you need help through ECC, we should be banking on 24 hours a day uh, by the end of this quarter. So if you need expert care, have that number in your phone as well. Awesome. Jenny, how are we doing on time? Do I have time to ask him a question? Ask him. Okay. <laughs> so you mentioned the, uh, the addendum to the listing agreement that talks yep. about just basically splitting out the listing side commission, buyer side commission. Right. Is there a day coming soon where that's going to be a requirement to add that to our listing agreements? It's going to greatly depend, and I'll tell you guys, it's going to greatly depend on what your individual state does. I'll give you an example. We have 20. Well, we're all in Alabama, so what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was a broker, he wouldn't be able to do that. But he didn't do that. So, all right, so, uh, but it, it, uh, it's going to really depend on your local MLSs and how they change. All right. So right now, MLSs are tiny kingdoms. We've got 28 various contracts in this state, first and foremost, which means we probably have 28. Well, we've got 19 various listing agreements in this state. So the, the writer to the listing agreement 
right now is what we refer to as a best practice because most of your listing agreements have that one line that says gross total amount, commission. total commission. We prefer you split it out on the rider just because it does define that, that avenue of it. Because what we don't want to ever occur to one of you, because eventually, you know, the lawsuits in California and Texas and Nevada are now naming individual agents, individual teams, all this kind of stuff. So what we want to make sure is that no one can come around and say, I didn't know. So if it's split out, guess what? You knew because you put an initial beside it. So we want to make sure that we are able to do that. Right now, it's a best practice. Personally, if I had my druthers, it would be a requirement because we got too many variables. And, and at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. And by the way, E&O has not been increased since 2017. So this is the first time we ever had to increase E&O. And that was only because of, you know, it's a litigious society now, guys. That's just the way life's going to be. Everybody wants to sue somebody and they always want to sue us. So, but yes, the listing writer is is a best practice. I would love to see it. Um, it could eventually, depending on what happens in some of these earlier lawsuits that we're going through, that it becomes a requirement, but I would say make it a best practice. Utilize it if you're not split out. And please, buyer broker agreements. Those are different than buyer agencies. We have a buyer broker agreement in SkySlope. Find it, use it, fill it out, because it's how you will get paid if the other people don't pay you. That don't way we have zero. something to go back on. Huh? Don't put a zero. <laughs> and please, for the love of all good, don't put zeros. The world has changed, guys. I'm sorry, it has. And the, I know our broker teams are gonna be training on, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that Jenny and them will be training on it, uh, about how to have those conversations with your purchasers, with your, with your clients, because it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of, like we said, Tuscaloosa, you can't even put it in the agent notes what a commission is going to be. It's not even allowed. And so just kind of kind of know that aspect of it. Awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. If I only had a recording of uh, Chad actually explaining this to a buyer, to me, what, yesterday or the day before? <laughs> Oh, what did I say? You were like, it's not that hard. That's you just did it and you went right on into script mode. And I'm like, it's beautiful. I should have been recording that. <laughs> but you do have to practice it if you have not been, if you've been actually putting zeros in um, on your buyer agency agreement or not having that uh, conversation with your client saying that, you know, I would have to look to you if the seller is not offering um, a commission. And like Chad easily said, and I'm sure you wouldn't want me to work for free because I wouldn't expect you to work for free either, right? Like they're waiting for the conversation. So um, we got this. It's not going to be a problem. Yeah, most people don't blink an eye on it. I mean, it, you know, and in most cases it's not an issue, but I mean, we just simply explain that, hey, this is our fee. Most of the time we're going to be paid by the seller through the transaction. If we come across a situation where our commission is not being covered by that, we're gonna let you know about it, Mr. Buyer, before we ever go look at the house and then you can decide, do you wanna pay us based on what we've agreed to on this form or do you wanna skip looking at that house altogether? And most of the time people are perfectly fine when they have anybody push back on that. So. Right, through all of these years, I've had one person say, I don't, I'm not gonna do that. And I said, so do you wanna not look at houses that aren't offered with that? And that was their answer, yes. So otherwise, um, people are happy to pay when they see the value, when they see the value in what you're doing for them. So um, I want to introduce our next speaker and our uh, next uh, uh, member of the um, Alabama leadership, and that is Clint Peters. Yay, Clint! Thank you so much. Hey, so the, I, uh, the first guinea pig. Yes, I know. So um, uh, use the arrow because okay. the. And you want them to stay on stage? Um, no. Okay, so I'm just going to get it. Yeah, and okay. uh, here's all your awards. All right. Good morning. Um, I have the privilege of announcing the uh, top single agents in the state uh, based off volume, and we'll come back right after that and do transaction number. So this is single agent only. If you are associated with a team, you will not be called up here, so you do not get disappointed. Your time is coming. 
And here we go, number 10, Natalie Bass, Natalie. Auburn. Come on up and get your prestigious award. It is not for award. Julie. Congratulations. Congratulations. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Next up, number nine, Freddie Guerra. Did I get it right? Cool. Guerra. <laughs> Freddie. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. Number eight, Paula Mahalik, Huntsville. I don't know if she may not be here. Number seven, Stephanie Schulte, Montgomery, Wisconsin. Stephanie! She stepped out to sell a house, apparently. Of course. Somebody had to. And okay. let me also say this about Stephanie. She is the number one uh, agent, EXP agent in Montgomery, Prattville area. So whenever she walks in, <laughs> <laughs> This is so typical. Let's start. Do you want to go? We'll come back to her. All right. Sure, Steve. Sure, Steve. Sure, Steve. There she is. <laughs> nope. That's, that's not her. Uh, All right. All right. We're going to keep going. going. All right. Number six, Rachel Perry, Winfield. <laughs> Congratulations. Congrats. Number five, five, Yanni Isbell, Birmingham. Number four, Joe Roberts, Gulf Shores. He couldn't be here today. He's a national today. Top three, number three, Eileen Fountain, Orange Beach. He is also not here. Number two, Marcus Mosley, Orange Beach. <laughs> Evidently, I need to go sell at the beach. <laughs> And then number one, surprise, Angelo DiPaolo, Orange Beach. Woo! Age five, age five. <laughs> Look at that number. Wow. Almost 32 million. Way to go, man. Yay. And that is your top 10 agent, single agents by volume in the state. Up next, by transactions. Here comes Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie, get... come on! <laughs> <laughs> the only person who gets an award. <laughs> Be, being awarded retroactively, Stephanie Schulte. <laughs> Don't fall. All right, and for number of transactions, number 10, Natalie Bass again. <laughs> number nine, Carl Heckman, Birmingham. Number eight, Linda Pritchett, Alexandria.
Seven, Shirley Hall, Birmingham. Her child had a fever. She couldn't make it today. Number six, Angelo DiPaolo, Orange Beach. Angelo, I'm doing the math, man. That's an, that's an awesome average sale, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's not really uh, Wait till you see his January. Right? You had a ton pending for January and February. Right? Just under eight million in January. It's awesome. February is like two million. February sucks for everybody. And so awesome, though. Number five, James Perry from Winfield. Freddie, Birmingham again. Don't be scared, Clint. It's guerra. I know. He told me. I still gonna get it wrong. <laughs> Number three, Stephanie Schulte, Montgomery, Watonka. <laughs> I thought maybe she stepped out to sell another house. <laughs> I got it straight from Kara. That's a good question for Holly. Number two, Yanni Isbell, Birmingham. That's awesome. Don't come up the stairs. I'll come down too. And number one. Number of transactions in the state of Alabama, Rachel Perry. Ryan Field. Y'all, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't know there were 76 houses in Winfield. <laughs> Girl is putting up solds and under contracts every day. And 76 plus. <laughs> like 40, 40, yes, plus. Exactly. <laughs> it's huge. Awesome. Dynamic duo right there. So um, amazing numbers, and we just want to celebrate you so much. So, all right. So, to present our um, icons, please welcome to the stage Candace Fab. She's fabulous. <laughs> If you have your um, icon paper in hand, um, please uh, line up and uh, I'll collect them here at the stage. Um, you know, this is a, such a great award because there are only, what, 42 icons in Alabama uh, in 2023. So it is a huge award um, that these people have earned in production. So super proud of them. Can I borrow you one second? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Is that on? Uh, it was, let's see. Here we go. I missed the beginning because I was checking people in, but I don't know if Jenny got the proper recognition. She almost single-handedly put together this entire event and probably has not done anything other than work on this event for the last two months. So we got you a little something. Oh, well that's sweet. <laughs> and it says, if I manage to survive the rest of the week, I would like my straight jacket to be in hot pink and my helmet to sparkle. <laughs> you, you are amazing. You get me, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll go collect. Okay. And, <laughs> and also, I wanted to acknowledge Sarah Runyon's because when you won the cultural award, we overlooked the fact that she single-handedly almost uh, led the iHeart EXP day for us in October. So we've got some phenomenal people, and I'm glad y'all are getting to meet the rest of the council today. All volunteer work, so we're very blessed to have the people that we do. And for those of you that are not familiar with the Icon Award, that's after you cap. 
You have to do roughly 20 more transactions uh, to meet your capping goal of $5,000. And the number that floats around is around 3% of the company hits icon. So this is quite an achievement for everybody. I was asked to bring our Dusty Award from 2022. We did not hit it last year, but if anybody has not seen the award before, this is what it looks like. Okay, Jenny, still collecting names. And also, in case you don't know, the Icon Award has only been around since about 2015, so it's still kind of a new thing. Did I miss anything, David, that you think would be important to share? Okay, all right. So we just need some names. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Okay, so first up is Kirk and Sheila Connell. Did I say that right? Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't need to be in the picture. And then we've got Chad and Jen Beasley. Mackenzie and Mary Martin Brown. Lori Fuller. Stephanie Schulte, we've heard that name a couple of times. And Mary Gail Weekly, accepting on behalf for two. We all do. Tanya Lee. So Tanya actually handled a referral for us last year, and she said, I'm new, but don't hold that against me. I had no <laughs> idea who I was working with. She did a great job. Rachel Perry. <laughs> and Angela J. Paola from my hometown of Orange Beach. Congratulations. Uh, Ricky is here. Ricky Cruz, also from my hometown. How are you? Uh, Carolina? Or Carolina? Carolina Guadalupe. Did I do that? Good drum. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. And Yanni is a bless your heart. We have given you a workout today. Congratulations. Freddie Greer. How'd I do? And Gusty Gulas. And I have, oh, you guys have some paper of Crawford Willis? Oh, okay. Hey, hi, guys. So who am I announcing? This is Harold, right? Oh, that's, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Congratulations, you guys. And Harold Collins. Congratulations. Best dresser here. Thank you. Congratulations to everyone. He up like that. <laughs> With a smile, too. And I think that's it, right? Yeah, thank you so much, Candace. Appreciate you. Man, the production that is in this room, it's awesome to see. 
on Stink. Yeah, that that I mean, and that Icon Award is just it's 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 the it's the thing with EXP, you know. It's just it's that life changing piece of the puzzle that they're just giving back, and that's just such a a financial benefit that you just can't get anywhere else. There's a lot of companies trying to copy it, but it's just. It's kind of like when you when you go to the copier and you make copies back in the old days. For those of y'all that have been selling real estate for a minute, you know, you get the contract and then there's something changed and you make a couple of copies and it gets faxed back and forth three or four times. Well, it just ain't the same as the original by the That's time you right. get to the end. So. <laughs> Good analogy. So the Icon Award is special. It is. And, and it I ain't easy. I didn't even get it this last year because because of the company and the platform, I was able to step away from sales. So and I forgot to walk across the the stage capping. But <laughs> 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 so oh well. Um, I need to uh, make sure that we introduce um, someone who's put her heart and soul into today as well, and um, that is Kristen Sutton. So Kristen, if you'll come on to the stage. She had so much fun uh, picking out decor and having cookies for y'all. And <laughs> so appreciate all your sweet little touches and everything that um, you've done. Yes. Good afternoon. How are y'all doing? Well, I was uh, kind of shoved into this. I normally <laughs> do not stand up in front of people. So, um, but a we got you. We won't let you fall off the stage. You're good. Yeah, I said, I said, y'all have to save me if I just. Start, if my if my legs start shaking. So, uh, born and raised here in Prival. Um, I have been licensed since 2005, um, going on 19 years, so it's been great. Um, how I originally got introduced to EXP, my cousin, Evan Crawford, back there, it was the holidays and we were sitting on the couch at his mother's house where we normally have Christmas and he started telling me about a really unique um, company. Um, the model started talking about that. I had been to some several big brokerages, um, some local, um, some Prudential Ballard. That was uh, one of the big hitters back in the 2005 in the Montgomery area. So I started there and just kind of went to different places. But honestly, y'all, for, for the first time, I feel like I can truly run my own business at EXP. Um, it has been just a wonderful experience for me. I'm going to list and sell regardless um, of, of what company that I'm with, but I can truly say that with the model, um, the referrals have been amazing. Shout out to, to Gracie back here. Anytime she, anytime she sees any referral in Montgomery, um, she will um, refer me. Um, it, it, the referral network has just, it's truly been amazing. Um, Want to tell you a little bit about Prattville. Maybe some things that you don't know. Um, I was born and raised here. I uh, left three years to graduate from the University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, my plan was originally to go to law school, so I didn't grow up and, and want to be in real estate, really. Um, but my plan changed. And so I was sitting at a closing. We had about 11 acres, uh, my husband and I, to sell. And I was sitting around a closing, and I thought, wow, this is really cool. Um, I'm a people person, I like this, so um, I started just getting obsessed. Um, worked in a few law firms, some of the big law firms downtown Montgomery, and I was like, this is just not my jam at all. So at the closing, it's just kind of like I just, um, I realized that it was something that um, could I could make a career out of, and I would actually help people. Um, I also during that experience in the law firms i also <laughs> worked for a few ambulance chasers i um, actually got in a wreck one morning on the way to work and i realized that's not the business that i want to be in so anyway so after we sold this land i was so obsessed with real estate i knew every agent every listing i would go to every open house it was just um and it just kind of at first became a hobby and then all of a sudden it just it just became an obsession and my husband was like, hey, 
kind of like your husband. Um, you're so obsessed with this, why don't you like make a go out of it? So that's what I did. Um, got my license while I was working at a court reporting firm and just got all, I did the online course and kind of the rest is history. Um, like I said, born and raised here. We actually ended up here um, before I was born. My grandfather was stationed at Maxwell Air Force Base. Uh, we have two Air Force bases here. We have Gunner, we have Maxwell. Uh, we've got the new James Hardy plant. We got international paper. So we have uh, got the Hyundai plant in Montgomery. So we always have a, a pretty big flux of people um, in the area. So it keeps our market um, pretty active. Um, you know, sales, rentals, all that kind of stuff. So uh, we have a Medline, actually. So a lot of little fat manufacturing plants around here um, that keeps our, our um, area pretty active. Um, as far as speaking of my hometown, um, things that I love. Um, actually, where we're standing here, Prattville, the cool thing about Prattville and the mayor is actually gonna come up and speak to you and tell you a little bit more history than, than I know. But um, actually where we are now, I remember um, it was a Christmas tree farm. So it was old man, Mr. Cobb, Cobb's Ford uh, Road. It was a Christmas tree farm. So we'd come out and get our Christmas tree. This is way before the Marriott, way before Target, TJ Maxx and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, uh, my grandparents settled here. He was in the Navy in the 60s. So um, that's a long time ago. Um, and the thing I love about it is it's still got the small town feel. But if I was to say anything about it, like the downtown area where I live, it has kind of like a New England vibe. Um, lots of little eateries, restaurants, and Actually, downtown, the mayor has done a lot downtown, and Prattville actually got one of the top five towns in Alabama, Little Christmas Town. So if you guys ever have a chance to come back, and, and um, they do downtown, it's, it's beautiful. Even in the fall, we have the fall of, of pumpkins. Um, so it was listed on one of the top five Christmas towns. Uh, but I love the feel of downtown, but we call this kind of like the Prattville East, so if you want the modern amenities, the stores, you know, the commercialized, you've got the best of both worlds. Plus, you're about three and a half hours from the beach, which is great. And if you want to go to the Great Smoky Mountains, about six and a half hours up the road. So <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you've got the best of both worlds. Thank you so, so much for sharing. Yes. And, oh, I didn't even... Huh? And you're going to make your introduction? Yeah, that's the mayor. Uh -huh. Is he here? Is he here? Is Mayor Gillespie here? Well, he may not have shown yeah. up. <laughs> Kristen had asked him to come and share a little bit about um, the city, but um, he, I don't guess he showed and y'all are hungry anyway, right? <laughs> Thanks so much, Kristen. I uh, want to give you a little tip. Um, uh, so I own a little company called Good Real Estate Life where I've helped real estate agents transition into multiple six-figure incomes for at least 12 years. And I have a free app if you're looking to be productive. I saw it on your phone just a minute ago when you were counting your points. Um, it's free and this is the download um, for it. Um, uh, if you are looking for new ways to grow your business that are fun uh, and things that you'll actually do, <laughs> then uh, download that and get some new tips. So um, is lunch set up, Jay? Okay, all right, what, so. What are our rules? What, I don't, I'm, oh, I'm asking, I okay. don't know, what's the. So uh, everything is set up for us outside and um, just, we're gonna take a break until, what time is it now? 11.30. Okay, so what time? Okay, so we're gonna um, come back up at uh, 12.30. Um, so you'll have time to mingle, meet, make phone calls, do whatever you need to do. And when we come back, 
We have Ricky Karuth speaking, y'all. Yes. I'm so glad that he was able to have in his schedule Tom to come spend with us today and to share because um, I know that uh, everyone in this room just admires what he has done. So food is right out here um, and fix your plates and you can come back in here and eat. So. And this is a great opportunity for y'all to get those networking names and numbers and also visit all our sponsors and learn more about what they do for us. Yes, thank y'all so much. So y'all, so we're going to get started just a few minutes early because um, I know y'all are chomping at the bit to, to do business. Um, I, I want to introduce to you properly um, Atlantic Bay. They are a headlining sponsor with us and they give us so much support at EXP. They are constantly sponsoring our events, showing up, meeting with our agents and seeing how we, um, they can support us. So if y'all would please introduce yourselves. Hey everyone, I'm Alan Drake. Congratulations on all your success. Hey everyone, I'm... Oops, there we go. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. Okay. Okay. There we go. Just got to turn it on. Uh, hey, I'm uh, Jason Cook. Hi everyone, my name is Marisol Milan. Hello everyone, my name is Gisela Pansini. And I'm ready to sing. <laughs> American Idol right here. <laughs> well, thank y'all so much for sponsoring today and always the support that you give our agents. If y'all would please reach out to them and see how and um, what programs that they may offer that can help your clients. Um, we just appreciate y'all so much. So. <laughs> Their favorite question is, what's the rate today? <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> he put you on the spot to ask you what rate is. <laughs> no, he was I'm kidding. joking. <laughs> what are home prices like today? Yeah. Jason. Spectacular. <laughs> and for y'all who, uh, if you don't know Jason, Jason is also in our referral company as a licensed agent. And uh, I've had the pleasure to do business with Jason for many, many years. So. Um, uh, I just wanted to make sure you knew that he was actually part of the EXP family as well. So thank y'all so much for being here. Y'all please. <laughs> There's no way that we can have events like this, thank y'all so much, um, without having sponsors, just because these things are so super expensive. In fact, we pretty much all chipped in <laughs> to, to finish paying for the rest of this event because it wasn't all covered. Um, and uh, that's why it means so much for people to have support uh, with our agents and for these events. So I want to make sure we call out everyone else. So Meredith Jones here with, you, you can say there, it's fine. You're going to present in just a little while. With Ally Home uh, Inspections, Property Inspections, and uh, I personally use them and uh, I'm always so grateful for y'all. Um, and they're super easy to book online. Um, uh, I sent somebody there just yesterday. Yes, yes. So you're welcome. And uh, I want to, y'all, this is very interesting. This is units. Hey. <laughs> and units are kind of like pods. But better. <laughs> never, never mention the competition. I know, right? <laughs> but, uh, we're going to have to have that um, edited. Philip will have to edit that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> but very interesting stop by and make sure you talk with him because I know that um, I've used that a bunch um, those systems a bunch in my business and they come in so handy whenever there is an occupancy issue when it comes up so um, also uh, we've got um, I'm trying to I can't I can't read I can't see America's preferred. <laughs> yes yeah, America's preferred, preferred home warranty I can I could not read it um, we thank you so much for being here and supporting everyone and um, definitely stop by and get some more information about their home warranties and how they can help and serve you. And I can tell you I've gotten um, several phone calls and uh, had a chance to talk with you recently and uh, just have loved you every time. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, we've got um, Rely Title. 
<laughs> it's not time it's yet for you to present, but um, uh, want to make sure that you see. I mean, y'all saw the Stanley Cups. They did, they came and they weren't playing. They, right? They, were they showed up. <laughs> y'all revived us. That's a great job, and they've got offices for closing all over the state, in different markets. So they're they're always a big supporter. We appreciate them. Yes. Thank you so much. And who are we missing? Uh, Surf Pro back there in the corner. I yes. Think. Okay. The so company that nobody ever wants to need. I know. <laughs> so, and Kristen, um, uh, this is uh, Kristen's contact, and we're so grateful that you're here today. And we've all had houses that have flooded or had issues, and you know, they are the first person to call. To, to handle that so thank you make sure you get numbers um, or if it just smells like an ashtray right I can handle that. <laughs> oh my gosh and Kristen you had one last year that was really bad <laughs> so yeah that's what the pictures look like so just wanted to make sure we got everyone we've also got um, Wayne's pest control Laura are you here okay I thought for sure she was coming, um, but she's probably outside on the phone. But uh, make sure you talk to Wayne's Pest Control. They've been handling our uh, situations across the state for so many years. In fact, um, one uh, Wayne, the original, the OG, <laughs> is a friend of ours, and he's actually the father of one of our agents who um, couldn't be here today. So we, we love Wayne's Pest Control and support them. And um, we also have a very um, uh, innovative uh, new uh, technology offered um, through this real estate, and that's Philip, who is doing our videography today. Um, that is a new platform that he is helping real estate agents with their video work. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and y'all, if you just even hire Philip to hang out with to do a video, I mean, it's worth <laughs> it because uh, he and I spend a lot of time together and uh, he's always uh, a hoot and always so much fun. So, and two men in a truck. So, do we have our two men in a truck, folks? Okay, well, I just wanted to point them out. They're probably coming back in as we started a little bit early. And um, just make sure you connect and uh, offer them a referral if you can, because it just means so much. All right, so Kristen, do you want to introduce? We're going to get started with um, the mayor because we were actually ahead of schedule. We're never ahead of schedule, y'all. We're always way behind schedule. And he wasn't here for his time just because we were ahead. So um, want to make sure he gets a proper introduction. Wait, you're saying the mayor didn't have extra time on his hands just to show up early? And <laughs> <laughs> well, um, earlier, uh, I, I didn't realize that we were running ahead, ahead of schedule. But anyway, I wanted to invite someone that um, is really um, a wonderful person, but he's also, he's known my family growing up. He's done a lot for this town, but also um, a lot more knowledgeable about the city of Prattville. So, and, and what's going on here, the growth um, and all of that. So I would like to introduce Mayor Bill Gillespie, Jr. Thank you, thank you. Can't get away without a hug there, so thank you. Thank you, and, and I tell you, I want to welcome everybody here to Prival. I tell you what, it's uh, you're coming here during a very good and exciting time. But I tell you, one thing that I really do love about the real estate business are you people. I tell you what, whenever we have a regular realtor lunching here around the River Region, the, the mayors, especially of Millbrook, Prival, and Wetumpka, we have a heck of a good time. I think a lot of the local realtors here can can uh, really relate to all that, but. You know, you guys are sort of like the cool kids around all the different areas. Because if, if I have to go and speak somewhere, do I want to go talk to some insurance folks? Do I want to go talk to some CPA folks or some other politicians? Heck no. We want to be around you guys because you guys know so much more about our communities sometimes than what we do. I mean, because you're always out there. Matter of fact, I get uh, either work orders or text messages, phone calls, emails from realtors all the time. Well, you got a traffic light out here or, or a street light out. Matter of fact, I might need to put a work order in on this light over here as well. But, you know, it's just, you guys do so much for our various communities. And I know there's so many folks here representing all different parts of the state. Again, I want to say thank y'all. 
because y'all actually do do so much more for the communities, not only with the housing market, but also with the education market, with our churches, with our schools, just everything. Y'all are so, so important to all of us small town mayors. And I just, again, want to say thank you. So if I can, I'd like to give y'all a round of applause for everything that you do for us all because it, it, it does make a big difference. But if we can, I'd like to give Kristen a big round of applause because, you know, logistics is so, so important. And um, getting all this arranged and, and pulled together is not easy. So if we can, let's give her a round of applause. And I hope y'all keep coming back each and every year. Because if you do, keep walk, working with me. Who knows, we might be able, Preble might be able to be a little bit of a sponsor as well. So, but we would like for y'all to keep coming back here. You know, we're right here in the, in the middle of the state and maybe you can change your time because we're very well known for some of our festivities around um, um, Christmas and also fall season. We have a parade of pumpkins. Um, and I'm certain y'all are aware of a lot of the technology you have with the, with the phone where you can pick up on how many folks have been in an area who, who comes in and where they're from and so forth. Well, during the fall season, we have a parade of pumpkins. And it's not a true parade where you have a, you know, people walking down the street. But it's where uh, you have pumpkins, whether they're real, plastic, paper, whatever it might happen to be. We get the schools involved and we have some little contests. And we set it up in what we call our spillway park. And last year during this event, we had over 75,000 folks that came through. Wow. During the Christmas season, which there again, from the time we light up the Christmas tree all the way through to the Christmas parade, they had over 150,000 folks that came through. And so to me, that's a big deal in the city of Prowl. When I was about seven or eight years old, we had about seven or 8,000 folks here. Now we're about 38,000. And so just to know that that many comes through, and I don't know anybody uh, who all here might have been in, back in 2012, Coca-Cola had a big contest about um, America's favorite park. We got involved in it about two weeks late. We actually ended up winning it, and we had over 30 million votes uh, during that season for that one. And a lot of that I credit to to our realtors, but then also Maxwell Air Force Base and the connection that we have there. But you know, the 55 minutes that I've been given just isn't enough time for me to go through <laughs> all the problems. And I'm glad I was, I'm, and I'm very impressed that you guys were ahead of schedule because that never really happens no, in, in, never, at all. It's on shocking, actually. And it makes it easier on me because I was going to come up here and use the five B's of speaking. Do y'all know what the five B's are? Especially if you're standing between the crowd and lunch table, be brief, brother, be brief. So that's one, of the, that's one thing I always practice if I'm standing between the, the lunch table and everything. But I hope you guys can really find the time to come back and, and really see what all we have here. The uh, river region here, especially Prival, we have so much going on. We, we, have been, we have laid down more asphalt, we have poured more concrete, and we have invested and improved our parts more the last uh, year and a half and probably the last 15 years before then. And, uh, but with that also, we're working with our various um, partners with education, uh, businesses, and uh, again, you guys being realtors, I'm certain y'all had sold at least one house that has a product on it that uh, might not have been exactly made here in Prival, but the company has moved here. Now they have their world, the largest James Hardy manufacturing is here in the state of Alabama in the small town of Prattville. And so we're glad to have him here. So I'm certain somewhere y'all have sold a house with James Hardy uh, housing product on there. And so we are, we are the largest uh, in the world with James Hardy. They made a $200 million investment. Now they're making a $400 million investment. And a lot of that is because of all the hard work that you guys are doing. So I want to say thank you for that as well. But hopefully you can come back as I think might have been mentioned a little bit earlier, this side of problem probably is a little bit unique. We're in two counties, Elmore County and Otago County, but this side of, uh, of Prattville is Elmore County. Uh, used to be a little Christmas tree farm. Uh, this area over here as well was a part of a flat cotton field, and now it's the James, uh, it's the Robert Trent Jones Golf Course, and they have really helped us um, with our economy and this whole central area, but we're very blessed to have our midtown, our downtown, and again, I need to be realizing my five Bs. I'm going over on that a little bit. But please try to find your way to come back and 
Come downtown, the city hall is. I'll be glad to show you around. But while you're here, while you're here, please buckle up. My daughter got a uh, seatbelt ticket yesterday, so uh, <laughs> I hope she pays it. But anyway, but, um, but while you're here, though, if you're here with this group, rest assured, and, and if you do find your way downtown, we got all of our speed limit signs posted. But if you happen to get a speeding ticket, let me know, I'll help you with that. I'll show you where the ATM machine is, we'll accept out of town checks and cash as well. But again, thank y'all. If anything you can do, let me know. But please come back to travel anytime. Thank you. Thank you so much. So believe it or not, I have always wanted to do an event here, and Prattle is centrally located to every place in the state. That's why it was so easy for you to get here from everywhere you were coming. So most of us came this morning. Um, it's such a great place to be right here. And you wouldn't know it, but there's a fantastic view right outside that window. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we'll um, I just wanted to say, Jen, you're driving home. I'm not taking any chances in this town. <laughs> if the mayor's daughter can't get out of a ticket, I'm, I'm not getting behind the wheel. <laughs> Feel like I'm in Harpersville. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. <laughs> Right by County Road 444. <laughs> so um, we've got a, a, a sweet video that corporate sent, and I literally got it just a few minutes ago. And uh, Glenn himself would have sent it, um, uh, but he is in South Africa right now. And uh, he did send me a message saying um, to please tell everyone here that he celebrates everyone's success. So we are appreciative of him. And if you ever have the opportunity to send him a workplace chat, he will answer you. And uh, it's very impressive. It's one of the things that um, uh, Gusty and I have loved about this company that um, he does. He's very responsive to us and always knows our names whenever we go to any event. Um, so as big as we are with 89,000 agents and counting, um, you know, we still can have that connection. As long as it's up to us, we have to make that effort to have the connection because of the way that our virtual platforms are. But it's definitely there, like Chad said earlier, the collaboration with people, right? Yeah, and uh, the, <clears throat> uh, it's been said up here already, but our, our leadership and the, the, the leaders of this company, Glenn Sanford as CEO, they are so interested and so engaged in making sure that this company is built for and around the agents that I mean, a few months ago, Jen and I had a concern about something. We sent a message um, that we copied Glenn on in Workplace, and y'all, he called us. <laughs> Glenn Sanford called us to discuss the issue. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world, that the CEO of this worldwide company would, would call Chad and Jen Beasley in Alabama to discuss our concerns. So, uh, pretty cool. It is, and everybody has that. Um, uh, opportunity. It's not just us. You matter as an agent. So want to make sure that we um, address that. So let's hear from Russ. Hey there, this is Russ Lagan, Senior Regional Director of Growth for EXP, one of EXP's executives. And I want to say on behalf of the executive team, we're talking Glenn Sanford, Michael Beltez, Leo Pereja, Carolyn Merchant, all of the C Group people in the in the company. They are working really hard right now on a couple projects to take the business to the next level, take EXP to the next level. Uh, so with that said, I just wanted to make sure I personally reached out on behalf of the leadership team to tell all of you in Alabama, congratulations for doing a great job last year. Without you guys selling houses, the whole thing stops. So the most important people in the company are always the people that are out selling houses. So I wanna say thank you, number one, for being here. Number two, thank you for doing all you do for EXP. And number three, congratulations on doing all the sales that you did in the last year. And for those of you that didn't have a whole lot of sales and you didn't hit one of the top two, three, four, five, ten 10 groups, hey, this year's your year. Put your head down, figure it out, ask questions. You got a lot of people around you to collaborate to help you take your business to the next year. Part of what EXP is all about is helping all of you do better every year. Again, Russ Lagan, I will catch up to you guys later. Love how you roll. Congratulations to Alabama. That was so sweet of him to do. <laughs> Even if he is in boxer shorts below that vest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and so yesterday um, I asked him if he would reach out because he knew that we were having the awards banquet. and. Um, he, he said, I'll send, I'm going to send you something special so that you can play first thing in the morning. I said, okay. And guess what? Cell service was out. <laughs> so I didn't think we were going to get one. 
but he stayed on it and made sure that I got one. I think that um, just shows kind of who he is. He answers my text on Sundays. <laughs> so um, now, speaking about sales, um, uh, we've got a super treat for you because um, this man pours his heart and soul and everything he's got into helping real estate agents. Um, uh, get better and the one thing that I absolutely love that he does is make live calls on videos because that's something you're never gonna see me do <laughs> 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 and I love that he does that because it's so real and it's so raw and he gives agents a lot of great suggestions for you to grow your business and uh, we're proud to have him at EXP um, please help us welcome Ricky Carruth Ricky's a fellow balloon jumper. <laughs> How y'all doing? Good. Good, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Cool. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But I got this really nice three bedroom house for sale right down the road. Didn't think you might be interested in that. Now, how you guys doing? Good. I, uh, I was in LA on stage last week. You know, I said, I'm from Alabama. And when I tell people I'm from Alabama, all right, I'm from Alabama. I was born in Huntsville. People don't know that. I was born in Huntsville, yeah. And then I lived in Springville. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I lived in Springville for a while, yeah, till I was about in third or fourth grade, then we moved down to the beach. So mom and dad are from Athens and, and Huntsville, and they, they, they just love the beach. So they relocated down there, and I grew up there, went to Gulf Shores Elementary, and uh, lived there all my life since then, between Orange Beach and Gulf Shores. So really fortunate. Really fortunate. Watched the whole thing grow up. It's just been absolutely amazing. On the way up here, I was riding with my guy, Marco. He's like, I'll ride up here with you. We're riding. We're on the interstate. We saw the most Alabama thing you'll ever see. Only in Alabama. We're riding down the interstate. You know, and I'm like, oh, I see a car broke down up here. Okay, cool, whatever. Right, on the other side. As we get a little closer, I see that the hood's open. All right, as I get a little closer, I see it's not just one car. It's a line of cars. And these are all like middle-aged cars, you know, kind of broke down cars. I mean, they're broke down, they're got the hood up. Get a little bit closer and I realize they're all connected. They all got the little, you know, things that turn them into trailers and they're all connected to each other. It was three of them and then three, three of them and then two more. So, so imagine this, like they're driving down, like caravanning, one car's pulling three, two more cars and one car's pulling another. And then the one that's pulling them breaks down because the hood was up. We both passed by and we were like, Alabama. <laughs> Only in Alabama. I told them in LA, I said, who's from LA? And they're like, oh yeah, we're from LA, we're born and raised. I said, me too. Lower Alabama. <laughs> nah, I, uh, I got in real estate in 2002, all right? And before that, I roofed houses with my dad down on the beach. Well, it's cool coming up here, getting on this exit, because this is literally, this is what got me in real estate. I was coming up here, I was going to a school in a little place, you guys probably hadn't heard, called Tuscaloosa. <laughs> I went there for a semester, and I would take this exit to get there every single time. All right, I ate at that Waffle House so many times, I can't even remember. And went there for a semester, boom, failed a history class. I was like, this sucks. Like, college. College sucks. <laughs> and somebody was up here that said they graduated from, from University of Alabama. Who was that? God bless you. I couldn't do college. It wasn't for me. But anyway, I said, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do this anymore. Plus, I was like, I want to go do stuff. I'm spending money not doing nothing. They taught me this in high school. Okay. So guess what I did? I went to Shelton State, and that's where I took my real estate pre-license class. And so I, I took that, got my license. Well, I didn't get my license. In class, they're like, see, see what, what I thought when I got my real estate license, it would be like a motorcycle license, like on my driver's license forever. I just get a stamp, and I'm done. I can sell houses the rest of my life, whatever I want to, no responsibilities, nothing. And in class, he was like, the teacher was like, 
once you pass this class, then you got to go take a test, then you got to find a broker in 90 days, then you got to take a, a post license class, then you got to do continuing ed, then you got to pay all these fees. I was like, I don't know if I want to do all this. I was, at the time, I wasn't very commitment oriented, let's just say. And I didn't know that I really wanted to do it at all. So I passed the class somehow, like by the skin of my teeth, a 70, came back to the beach, roofed houses with dad for like three days. I was like, dad, I think I'm gonna try real estate. So I went, I took the test, and as I was looking for brokers, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm going and interviewing with brokers, guess what they all told me? I was 20. They all said, you're too young. We don't want you. Don't you know 90% of agents fail? I said, well, okay, that's fine. You don't want me, but don't you know 10% of agents make it? And so here I am. I was like, all right, listen, every single thing that I've accomplished has been in the wake of people thinking that there's no way in hell that I'm gonna do what I'm saying I'm gonna do. Every single thing. And that's kind of what, that, honestly, if it wasn't for the people that said I couldn't do something, I probably wouldn't have done it. It was even my dad. The first year I made 20,000, and the next year I said, I'm gonna make 150. No, I said, two, I'm gonna make 200,000 this year. He said, no way. You're gonna make 60, 50, something like that. I said, all right, cool. That's all I needed to go make 200 that next year, my second year in the business. But when I got in, it took me eight months to make my first deal. And so picture this, I grow up roofing, I get into real estate, I'm still roofing as I'm trying to get my license, so I'm kind of, I'm there on the roof. I get, as soon as I get my license, I say, Dad, I'm gone, see ya, adios. I go to the office, I'm a full-time agent day one. Guess how many properties I sold in the first 30 days? So then I say, Dad, I'm coming back. <laughs> now I'm roofing and trying to do real estate at the same time. And so as I'm roofing and doing real estate at the same time, boom, it takes me eight months to get to that first deal. And that was a tough eight months. I mean, when you're 20 and you really want something, I know there's a lot of people here that are kind of going through the same thing or everybody went through the same thing. I don't care who you are. Starting out in real estate is the hardest thing. I don't wish it on my worst enemy, honestly. Right, it's tough. I get to that first deal and it was euphoric, right? And so I it wasn't quite ready to leave the roof again, but I, I got to where I closed four, I believe, and I was like, Dad, it's real this time, I'm gone. And so then guess what happens? I go out a couple years later, I'm 23-ish, I make a million dollars. The market blew up, this is 2002, three, this is before, this is the, this is the, the boom and the crash. Right, this is the boom part. I make a million dollars and I'm 23. Long story short, the market crashed, I lost everything. And I said, Dad, I'm back. <laughs> so it's just been this back and forth, roofing, real estate, roofing, real estate my entire life. But he told me something a long time ago, even when I was, when I was little. I remember I was, I was working little jobs, working at Waterville, uh, concierge, you know, I don't really like my job. He said, son, don't ever quit a job, just add to it, which means have a second job. When you have a job, find another job that could be better. Take it and have two jobs. If it's better, get rid of the first one. Make it your primary. Go look for another one. See if it's better. And you're always moving up. You know, humans are the only species who are built to progressively get better and better and better. Which means tomorrow's supposed to be better than today, next month's supposed to be better than this month's, next year's supposed to be better than this month's. If you're not progressing in your life, then there's something missing. Because we're built to do better and better and better. But that really stuck with me, and I've always had two jobs. I have two jobs now. I had two jobs as I, when I was an agent. And I was always searching for, okay, what, what's the next thing? So when I lost everything, literally bankrupt, sleeping in my car, my, my friend gave me 
his car, which was this beat up. So I had two Hummers, a Cadillac CTSV, houses, all kinds of stuff, and I'm 23. And when I lose all that, I go from all that to this beat up Ford Taurus contour, literally beat up, you couldn't open up the door. I had to ride the brakes whenever cops went by so that because the tail lights didn't work. Boom box in the back, the whole nine yards. And <laughs> so I could listen to music. What's that? Yeah, it, 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 was, it was some Alabama stuff. <laughs> And so I'm, I'm riding this car around now. I'm sleeping in this car several, several, several nights. I'm eating out of friends' refrigerators. I had nothing, but I'm roofing. And you know what I thought? I thought this is the greatest blessing that anyone could ever ask for. Why? Because what I was going through, the same guys right next to me who were 40, 50, and 60 year, years old, they were going through it too in those later years in their life, starting over, losing everything. And I was in my mid-20s and I thought, thank you, Jesus. Uh, what I learned from this is gonna put me in the stratosphere later on in my life. And I was young, I could get back on the roof. There's no way I could get back on the roof. I, I could if I had to, but I would probably get into something else if I had to start all over at this point. But I did, I went back, I roofed, and then I got a job on an oil rig in Mississippi. So I'm driving to Mississippi every other week. And I was like, yes, a place to live every other week on an oil rig. And on my weeks off, I can try to get back into real estate. Well, that didn't work out too well because they literally kill you on the rig. It takes a week to recover physically from what they do to you out there. And, and they rotate the shifts. When you go out there, it's from six in the afternoon to six in the morning. And then when you go the next week at six in the morning, six in the afternoon, so your sleep is all messed up. You're sore, you feel, I mean, it, it takes time to recover. It didn't work out like I wanted to on that front. But the guy that helped me get started originally in 2002, when I got in the business, this guy was like a mentor. He was just an agent at the, at the company. You know, and, and, and the bottom line was he taught me phone calls, postcards, and emails. And this guy, this guy is an innovative marketing genius. He's one of the best agents on the coast now. When he's on, he's the best. Nobody can touch this guy. One of my best friends. But he, in 2006, when everybody was out of the business and leaving and uh, selling nothing and everything was at the bottom, he was crushing it, selling three properties a month. Condos on the beach, something nobody needs. People don't need condos. That's the last thing you're gonna buy in the middle of uh, the deepest, darkest recession that we've seen. He was selling them. So I said, Scott, what you doing, man? Tell me, give me the secrets. He said, come on over, I'll teach you everything. So I go over there, we sit down. You know what he teaches me? Phone calls, postcards, and emails. The same thing. And that's when things started to click a little bit for me. That's when it started to click just a little bit for me about how closings are the most consistent thing in the ever living world. They'll never stop. No matter what's happening in the market, closings will never stop. That's when, it, that's when that hit me. Because I started looking at the data and realizing we're at the bottom, but look, there's closings happening every single day. We just had a 2008 year last year, the same amount of transactions as 2008, right? We're all still here. We just went through the worst year that we'll see in a long, long, long time, in my opinion. And we're still here. But when I realized that closings happen every single day, that was a breakthrough for me because so many agents feel like the market is, their business is correlated to the market. You know, agents DM me about, oh, what do you think the market's gonna do? I'm like, why are you asking me? Because if it's about if it's if it's about your business succeeding, then it then don't ask me because it doesn't matter. If your business is correlated to the market, if the market fluctuates, it, it can fluctuate it. You can go from five hundred thousand to four hundred thousand, yes, but it can't take you out unless you let it take you out. If your business does not have the foundation in place, 
For example, if my business is founded on incoming leads and I'm dependent on a lead source and that lead source dries up because the market dries up and I don't know how to go out there and create leads out of thin air for nothing, I'm screwed. But that's my fault. I allow myself to become dependent on a lead source. I can create leads out of thin air today, right now, in any market. It's super, so easy. But you have to develop those skills. And when you develop those skills, nothing can take you out. Because it doesn't matter what, what's going on with the market, boom, you know how to create demand. You can create your own demand. That's the cool thing about this business. There's the national market, there's the local market, and then there's the market within your business. And the problem is, agents are only doing 50% of the work. They're fine. What's our job? Our job is to, to connect buyers and sellers, right? So why is it that when we find a buyer, we sit around and wait on another agent to find, to find the seller? When that, our job is to connect the buyers and sellers, but we basically wait on someone else to do the other half of the job. Let's just do all of it right now. We get a listing, we wait on another agent to bring the buyer. Not me. I'm gonna call the most qualified buyers right now. Who are the most qualified buyers to buy, to buy any home? Any takers? Yeah. Someone who could upgrade or downgrade into that home that live close by. Those are the highest quality buyers. Let me ask you guys something. Would you rather have 30 active listings or 30 active buyers? What's that? Le okay, listings? Okay, buyers? You rather have buyers? These buyers? Why would you rather have buyers over listings? Listings, you're sitting there, all the other agents are selling that property for you, basically you're leveraging your time, buyers are driving you around, all hours of the night. I can't really have dinner with my family because this buyer wants to see a property at six o'clock versus the listing agents sitting at home just chilling, having dinner with their family while you're showing proper, the, their properties. Why would you want that? It's easier for me to reach buyers. No, 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 not how to get the buyers. What would you rather have if, 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 the, if the tables were exactly the same in terms of how to get them? Sellers or people? <laughs> <laughs> raise, your hand, raise your hand if you own a house. It's like 100% of humans are, are sellers. And every single bot. I like you. I like a challenge too. I, I like a challenge to be the most efficient I can possibly be to provide the best life for my family. You said you, you would like buyers more, right? I, I sat at a desk for 30 years, and I was not out and out, and it's the freedom that I get in my heart. It's just the You just love driving around. You love the, the wind in your hair. I got you. <laughs> got you. But that's the reality. Yeah. Yeah. So you can door knock. Well, here... Right, you, well you can run. <laughs> so here, here's the point I'm trying to make. Most of us want listings. However, 80, 90% of our actions are to attract buyers to our business. So our business is confused. We want one thing, but we're doing, the, we're doing something else, doing the exact opposite. And, what I'm, and, and the reason why we're doing that is because we think it's different. When it's not, it's the exact same thing. Have you ever had a buyer reject you or be mean to you? Yeah. Okay, okay. So most people don't go after sellers because they're worried about people being mean to them and reject them. So they do all this stuff and drive all these people around and pay all this money to get buyers who reject them and are mean to them. It doesn't make any sense. Our business is confused. Overall, you may love buyers. Our business is confused. And what I'm saying is, is let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to what we want. Let's line up our actions with what we want. Now, it's easy as this. What do you guys think I would like? Listings or buyers? It's actually, it's actually, it's actually buyers. 
plot twist. Now, why is that? I don't, I don't want buyers off Google or social media or Zillow. Absolutely not. Who do I want? I want the buyers who are going to upgrade into the house and sell their home, and now I'm killing two birds with one stone. Now I'm talking efficiency. Now, how do I get these people? I can call them for a penny. Say, hey, I see you have a three-bedroom. Do you need a four? Now I'm See, the reason why people are worried about calling sellers because we've been brainwashed into thinking that we have to call them to ask them if they'd consider selling. And now we're taking something from them. We're trying to get them to do something. We're trying to get them to give us a listing. And we don't feel comfortable asking for that. But we've been brainwashed into thinking that's what we have to do to get listings. It's not. Why don't we call owners and say, hey, I've got a really nice four bedroom. I see you have a three bedroom. Do you need a four bedroom? Because I, I made live calls yesterday on YouTube. It's there. And the second lady said, are you calling to, get, are you calling to see if I'm going to sell my condo? I said, absolutely not. God heavens no. <laughs> what I'm calling to see is that if you want this really nice three bedroom on the corner I've got. She's like, oh, okay, da, 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 da. And she opened right up to me. It started with closed up defense mechanism, but I'm there to bring value. I'm Mr. What can I do to make your life better? I'm trying to provide, I'm trying to give you a better life, a bigger house, a better view, a better location, a newer place. You want to live better? That's me. Don't confuse me with every other agent. I'm calling to give you something. Oh, I don't want that, but you know what? I actually, I might sell to do this over here. Okay, cool, tell me more about that. And now all of a sudden, I'm doing business, has nothing to do with the property I called about, but they opened up to me because I'm not calling to take. When, you, when, you're, when you're there for them, not there for you, and you don't care what the outcome is, when, I, when I'm talking to a prospect, number one, I'm not trying to list their house or sell the house or anything like that. I'm using that as an excuse to talk to them to see if I can get into a conversation and we can get a back and forth going and a little bit of rapport. See if, we can, see if we can get to know each other a little bit. That's the secret to this whole thing. So when I got back in 2008 and I, and I realized closings happen every day, I looked in MLS, I looked at my county records and I realized my clients, that I sold to in 2003 and four, they were still buying and selling in 2006, seven and eight when I was on the oil rig. That was like game changer for me. So I started to put the pieces of the puzzle together. I was like, all right, closings happen every day. So I don't gotta worry about business, it's gonna happen. I just gotta figure out how to do it. Now, how do I do it? Well, the number one reason people choose a real estate agent is because they had a friend in the business with a great reputation. A friend in the business. So I thought, oh my God, I got it. This business is about creating lifelong friends with people in the market, period, end of story. If I can retain lifelong friends with people in the market and I can systemize that at scale, then I will, I will never get hurt by another market swing, ever. Because you only have to tell me something one time. Once you tell me something once, that's it. You don't have to tell me again. Dad showed me how to lay a shingle, one shingle. That was it. The market took me out. You ain't gonna take me out again. When I come back, I'm gonna figure out what you did, Mr. Market. And you're never gonna do that to me ever again. So I had to come back and build the foundation. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Yes. Does this help you? Yes. So I get back in and I'm like, okay, I think I got this thing going. Lifelong relationships, care about them, don't worry about the deal, closings happen every day, competition doesn't exist. Doesn't matter what all the other agents are doing. You lose a listing, that's fine. I got now I got more time to go get more listings. Like losing deals are the greatest thing ever, right? Do this. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is, because you eliminate that person who doesn't want to do business with you anyway, and now all the time that you were going to spend on that deal, you can now invest into five more deals. And you literally can multiply your business by losing deals. Isn't that a novel concept? 
right? It's the perspective. It's just like thinking that we have to call sellers to ask if they wanna sell. No, you don't. Call and ask if they wanna buy and have something ready for them that's really amazing. It's perspective. We just have to reverse our perspective, just a little tweak against what we've been programmed to think we gotta buy Zillow leads. We gotta do Google. We gotta, uh, you know, call sellers and ask. No, you don't. We gotta do social media. Get all the buyers in the world. Come on, let's get real location business. No, I'm not. I'm gonna list the property that the people on YouTube are gonna be showing at six o'clock at night while I'm having dinner with my family chilling. I'm good. This is what I think about. What do I want my lifestyle to be? Because most agents get in the business because they want freedom. But what happens? <laughs> They ain't free. They work until 10 o'clock at night. They're getting pulled every which way. They have no control of their schedule and they're getting burnt out really fast. And they get into a, this place that's not good mental. It's not a good mental state. Mental health isn't good. Family life isn't good. That's not why we got into the business. We got into the business because we're our own boss. We make our own money. We can set our own hours. We do what we want. This is awesome. But then it doesn't turn out like that unless you create that for yourself. It's just perspective. You can decide if you want to flood your business with buyers and work like a dog, which is fine. Listen, I never turned down a buyer in my life. Not one. But I never did anything to get one either. I focused on property owners who bought and sold. 20% of my business was always buyers. 20%. But it was so easy because they were property owners that already knew how to buy a house. I didn't have to educate them like a first time home buyer. When I first got in the business, I was like, I'm gonna help first time home buyers. That's gonna be why I get in the business. I helped two first time home buyers and I was like, I'm not gonna help first time home buyers anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna go sell condos on the beach. That sounds a lot better. So when I put all this together, I started doing a weekly email full of the foreclosures because there were so many of them. There was like 40 of them at any given time. My clients kept saying, send me a weekly list of foreclosures. I was like, oh, okay. And I started this list. It got to like 10 to 20 to 30. I was like, I bet you everybody would want this. So I started sending it to everybody I had on my list every week. This is how my weekly email started. Every week, the foreclosures. And then as the foreclosures dwindled, my list grew. It just morphed into what it is now. I've been doing a weekly email every Wednesday since 2007. Still do it today. Write it myself. It is the most important thing in your business. Not a canned one that's automatically sent out. Not one every month. Every week on the same day of the week forever. Guess what? It shows that you're dependable, consistent, hardworking, honest, you have integrity, you're professional, you're knowledgeable, you're selling stuff, and you're bringing value. Now I just do social media, that's fine to get new leads into the funnel, to get their email to where you, they, they see you every week forever. Because the algorithm will, will not show you 90, not, they won't show 95% of your followers your content. Whereas 95% of my followers on my email list see my content every week forever. No matter what the algorithms do, use social media to extract the data, to get them into your, your database, your social media. What, when you open up your phone, what's the mo physical motion you do when you're looking at social media? Right? Right? You open up your phone, you go to your email, what's the physical motion? Mm hmm. So, what does that make email? Social media. It's a place where you post original, consistent content to market to your followers. It's the same thing. I didn't realize email was social media when I started doing it. I didn't realize I was building a personal brand when I started doing it, but that's what I was doing, and thank God but it was a way I could scale my business because it only took me 15 minutes a week, but it didn't matter if there was 500 or 5,000 or 50,000. I could scale that. And it did all the heavy lifting for me where when I met them and gave them that, that great first impression, they were like, wow, this person is amazing. But then they never forgot me because they started getting the email. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is again. There he is again. There, every week, every week, every week. Where most agents don't have anything in place really that you can, that you can get to everyone organically like that. So people forget about you unless you have a system in place. And it's got to be simple. It's got to be scalable. Does that help? Congrats to all the winners and stuff today. Um, I, uh, 
when I, you know, started crushing that, you know, from 2008 to 2014, 2014, I sold 100 properties. All right. So think about this. I get in, make a meal, lose it, come back. After learning all that, it still took me six, six years of grinding my ever living face off to get to 100 deals a year. Then I did 100 deals every single year since. And two years ago, I stepped out of production. My dad handles the day to day down on the beach. But I did 100 deals for eight years in a row. I was the number one Remax agent for three of those years. I was in the top five every year. I was the number one in my entire MLS. I was set, at the peak, I was selling about 45 million. Uh, did that for the last five years, 40 to 45 million. Single agent, no buyer agent, no listing agent, an assistant, and me. Now everybody thinks, oh my gosh. Well, number one, 100 deals is two deals a week. So let's, let's bring it into relative terms, okay? Can everybody do two deals a week? Could you handle two deals a week? Okay, so you can do 100 deals a year. It's not, it's not crazy, all right? It may be a little something, something, but it's not crazy, crazy, all right? But then how did he do it by himself? You know, all the showings and all that. I showed property to like three buyers a month, something like that. I'm closing like 10 deals a month, right? Eight makes 100 a year. 20% of my deals were buyers, so that's like one or two buyers a month. So maybe a couple buyers didn't buy. Maybe I showed four buyers, you know, on average per month. And I'm chilling. I'm working like a gerbil trying to like get, you know, I'm trying to make a million bucks. Like, like you know, this, this was my goal, to make a million dollars. That was my life's mission at that point. Once you make a million dollars, and then January 1 hits, and it goes from a million for the year down to zero, you're like, oh, shit. I gotta climb this million dollar mountain again. That was pretty tough. I don't even know if, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to do that again. That was wild. And it is wild. And after a couple years of that, you realize, wow, this is like a rat race. And so then I started doing social media. I never touched social media for my real estate business. Never touched it. Um, Calling condo owners, property owners, weekly email, postcards, all I did. You can crush your business. Every single little thing works, right? You don't have to do social media. You can do social media. You don't have to do email. You can't, every single thing works. You gotta figure out what works best for you and go all in on whatever those two or three things are. The problem is we try to do eight things because we're, we're scared about what business we might lose in these other five things that we kind of do on the side. Forget about that. Sacrifice that business to go all in here with the things that are really crushing it. So I started doing social media and wrote a couple books. I was like, well, the way I built the business was kind of unique. Let me share this with the world. And, and everything just kind of took off. That was 2017. I started speaking, writing, coaching, and now I'm, I'm in a different city every single week. I was in LA last week. I'm in New York next week. Houston, Atlanta. Vegas, da 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 da, and that, that's what I do now. Just travel around, help agents, try to double up. Um, I think that a couple things that are very interesting is new agents. Get any new agents? Oh, that's weak, man. Come on, man. Get the hand way up, bro. Yeah, he's like, uh, uh, that's okay. For I mean, I mean, really, first words of advice like never raise your hand or admit you're a new agent anyway. <laughs> But, just kidding, bro. The thing is, is that a lot of new agents feel like they can't compete with the big guys. But if you really, you should, we should really look at data. Because, like, an interesting data point for me on that is, more than 80% of people do business, buyers and sellers do business with the first agent they talk to. The first one they talk to. And this is one reason why I just absolutely crushed it. My business grew way faster than anybody else's. Because while they were waiting on people to contact them through these inbound portals, YouTube, uh, Google, Zillow, while they were waiting on people to, I was talking to them first. I'm like reaching out to them, I'm talking to them first. And now I have an 80% chance, more than 80% chance to do that business. Now you're not gonna, you're not gonna get 100% of the time because there's always an agent that already has a previous relationship with them, right? But when you lose a deal to an agent that has a previously relationship in place, that, that you should be like, okay, I understand the game. 
in three years, the people I'm talking to now are going to interview two agents, and I'm going to win it over the new guy because I've been talking to him for three years. That's how this works. It's the lifelong relationships and the systematic relationship nurture that you have in place. Now we can scale to the moon. Think about this. If you went out and just created, remember why people choose agents? Friends in a business? What if you went out and created five new friends with property owners every day, five days a week, 250 working days a year? Think about it. If you had a process in place where it got you into conversations and you created five new friends that own property in your market, and you did that every single year, and you're doing a weekly email. Think about this. Year one, you've got, what, 1,000? 1,250. 1,250 year one, doing the weekly email. You sold 30 properties, whatever. Year two, you've got 2,500 doing the weekly email. Now the leads from year one become warmer and the new leads compound out and now we got 2,500 and now all these people see us every single week on the same day of the week. Year three, we add another 1,250. And, but the 2,500 from year one and two is compounding and now we've got three years. But if we don't have an email or something like it in place, people from year one forgot who we are. And now we threw away all that work we did year one. The work is the relationships for life. Does this make sense? It's so simple. And something else interesting, especially in this post-COVID world, where now it's getting real. We went through COVID, we went through the rush where it was extremely easy, we went through the rush of agents jumping in the business, we went through interest rate hikes, and now where are we? We're back to a pretty normal market where we have to work. There's a lot of talk about AI and taking over our businesses and Zillow and things they're doing and um, you know the lawsuits and buyer commission and everything else. And it's so funny because you know the plaintiffs' lawyers and the you know the general public, you know, they're like, "Well, I got everything on Zillow. What do I need you for? Everything's right there." Again, let's go to the data though. Right now we're at an all time high when it comes to the amount of information that the consumers have about real estate, right? They know more, they, more, they, know, they know more than we do. Because like we're studying the whole market, we're showing properties, they're focused on like one subdivision and like going really deep. They know more than we do. But yet, even though we're at an all time high when it comes to the amount of information consumers have, guess what we're also at an all-time high at? The usage of real estate agents. So, so, I mean, just ponder that. If what you're telling me is that because more information is out there, you don't need us, but yet the data suggests that the more information that consumers have, the more they're gonna use real estate agents. What you're saying is bogus, it's just, coming out of your ass. Think about it. Now, why is this? Well, if you really think about it, it's because they don't know what they're doing. And so when they have all this information coming in, guess what? It begins to look like Chinese. And they're, and they're just completely overwhelmed with the information. And they're just like, oh, boom, agent. Got to have one now. And that is very interesting to me. I had a client call me this week, earlier this week. He called me a couple weeks ago. He said, there's a condo for sale we like. I sold him his condo he has now. There's a condo over here in the same building we like, it's bigger. I was like, buy it. It's for sale by owner or whatever. You know, this owner reached out to us and I said, buy it. Can't lose, not gonna lose. They were kind of pondering, you know, the real conservative. He calls me this week. It says, hey, we, we put it under contract by owner. We're selling ours by owner. I was like, okay, cool, great. He said, got a question to ask you. I was like, okay, shoot. He said, well, we got this offer, and it was a really strange situation with the offer. I said, well, Mike, this is what you need a real estate agent for. <laughs> right? This is what you need a real estate agent for. 
See, I said, I know you're trying to save some money, but look at the situation here. You went into it to save money thinking, oh, agents don't do anything. They're not, there's no value in real estate agents. But you want to call me as if I am representing you and get the consultation about what you should do with the offer. Because you know what the hell to do with the offer. I said, this is what's wrong with the entire situation. The general public thinks, oh, I can do that. Okay, get up there and roof your house. Go down there and plump, plump, take your, you know, replace your toilet. Fix, fix the internet. Go out there and dig a hole and figure out where, where the line's cut and fix that. We can't do these things. But, but we as agents have made it look so, that's the problem. We've made it look so easy. We're on social media like, we just sold another one. <laughs> oh, listing, uh, million dollar listing. You know, you know, oh, just sold me a $30 million home. You know, just like, almost like hungover waking up, you know. <laughs> now I know all those guys. They're fun. But it's funny because they think they can do it. Now we could go on, I could go on and on and on and on and on about the lawsuits, the ramifications, the different scenarios, da 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 da. You know what I can tell you? Because I'm not going to get into all of it. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Keep doing what we're supposed to do. Now what's our job? To connect buyers and sellers. So, so let me go back real quick. There's the national market, there's your local market, there's the market within your business. You create your own market in there. Connect the dots for the buyers and sellers that are within your, your business. Now what's so cool is you can do that for literally nothing. For just literally a penny you can get their information. You know, you've got a listing, it's a five bedroom, it's a three bedroom, it's a four bedroom. You get all the owners around it and say, I got a four bedroom. Do you need a better quality of life today? No? Tell me more about you. Now that we're talking, let me get to know you a little bit. I'd love to work with you in the future. Is it okay if I stay in touch? Cool, what's a good email? I'll send you over my stuff. I'll stay in touch with you via email. Again, I'm Ricky Carruth, EXP Realty, right here in Gulf Shores, right down the road from you, actually. If you ever need anything, give me a shout. I'm happy to come help you move a piece of furniture. Treat them like family. I'm not gonna, let's make some noise. Yes. Back up. I'm going to say one more thing about um, our company. This is, the, uh, this is the greatest company on the world in the face of the planet in the history of the world. And the reason being is because when Glenn created it, it was created because he looked at the industry and he said, look at all these agents working their ass off to make these corporations rich. That's not right. He said, you know what? We're gonna build a company, but for the agents that are out there working their ass off to make our, our corporation rich, we're gonna, we're gonna make them our partners. How innovative was that in 2008 for him to come up with a cloud-based brokerage to give people equity in their company for selling real estate? Oh my gosh. Now. The copycat companies, they were created to raise money. You know, they're owned by venture capitalists. We, we and Glenn own EXP, not venture capitalists. This company is created to be here forever to make the world a better place for agents. The other companies are, were created to make money. It's two different objectives. It's two completely different worlds. Be careful when you're looking at other companies. With the wool, they try to pull over your eyes. Because it's smoke and mirrors, I promise you. I've looked at everything, I've seen it all. All right? I hope, some, hope you took something here that you can take back to your business. Go crush it. What I really want to see you guys do is have a great year, but also, Look at the big picture, 2026, 
27, 28, 30. Those are going to be incredible years. The, the, the demographics, oh my God, we're going to have another 7 million transaction year. And we're all going to be here when it happens. I love you guys. Y'all want to hear something funny? Yeah. So in 2019, when Jen and I started looking at, at EXP, we were at Remax. Ricky was at Remax. Um, Ricky was usually in front of me in the awards day thing, but that's a whole different thing. But, um, but you know, I, we started looking at EXP, and I'm a researcher. I started digging into everything, trying to learn everything I could about EXP. One of the things that convinced me, one of the things that I used that, that really kind of solidified in my mind that EXP is where I needed to be was Ricky's video on why he wasn't coming to EXP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> Which he did not run down EXP. He was just saying why it wasn't for him at that time in his career. But he pointed out a lot of great things about EXP. And it was one of the things that I appreciated his honesty of not just taking EXP apart and saying that it's a terrible company. He was going, hey, it's a great company. It's just not for me right now. And it, it's just funny that um, now we're all here together. Sounds like you need to switch they don't allow that. Well, I tell you what, you and Gusty, if y'all just step outside, we'll, we'll have um, a rumble in the... <laughs> uh, anyway, good stuff. Yes, Ricky, that was awesome. Thank you so much. I think everybody really needed to hear that. Y'all, please, give it up for him. So, uh, as we have said before, that we love our sponsors and are so grateful for them. We've got a few words from the live title. So, please welcome to the stage, Paige Briggs. What? <laughs> I'm going to get out of the way of this. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's so good to see you. We're excited to be part of your celebration today. And um, as Jenny said, I am Paige Briggs, and I want you to meet my other friends with me today. I'm Laurie Bosley, and I'm Addie Hanchi. We are gonna give you the recipe for titling closing success. Okay, sorry. Um, we want your experience with us to be fantastic. So we're gonna give you the recipe. Um, the ingredients for a title and closing success, the first one starts with you add one salsa, aka one of us. This makes everything much smoother and sweeter. For listings, make sure you mix in a preliminary title search to make sure that nothing adds a hint of bitterness to our process before submitting a finalized contract to bake. After the contract is finalized, blend all parties involved together in an email including all pertinent information, including the lender, the other agent, the rely location of your choice, commission splits, and your rely sales rep. That will place your order for title and closing. Then fold in a rely location. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. To whisk all elements of the transaction together. Your sales rep will combine you with the closing coordinator at that location. Next, incorporate a quick response to all communications with our offices to make sure things bake properly. Dissolve and extract any worries or anxieties knowing that your Rely team has your back. And score points with your clients from a smooth closing transaction. And the last and probably best ingredient is do you need to sprinkle in a champagne closing to properly glaze the whole experience for your clients? And um, it's been an honor to prepare this for you today. Reach out to one of us, one of these sales reps here on the stage to help customize your title and closing experience to create a successful experience for you and your clients. And I wanted to mention that we at Rely have locations all over Alabama and we're happy to serve you. Um, to make that process smoother and easier for you to have one contact, that's why a sales rep is important. If you are in another part of the state, we're based in Birmingham, but have locations all over everywhere. If you're in another part of the state, just reach out to one of us. Our contact information is on the screen, and we're happy to connect you to the office that best suits you and your closing needs. Don't hesitate to contact us. Our heart is to serve you, 
and we're thankful to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've never known Paige to not be smiling. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for that. So, um, all right, we've got more awards to give out, and uh, we are super excited about introducing um, our colleague and friend in Birmingham, Freddie Guerrera. Freddie has the task of, of introducing our top teams. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll do the slides and you call them out. Yes. You ready? Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to understand speaking, but um, in case that you can, we have the big screen TV here to see. <laughs> because last night when I was looking at these numbers for the teams, they are big. I'm talking about they make any company look small. These teams are awesome. I'm glad they're part of EXP and we're ready to go. All right. Um, top 10 teams. Sold by volume, we have, and then the number 10, the short-term shop, Orange Beach, 21 million. <laughs> number nine, Taylor Jackson Real Estate Group from Trustville, Alabama, 24 million. Yay, Taylor! Number eight, Collins Group, Birmingham, 25.9. Congratulations. Congratulations. Number seven, the Holman Group, Huntsville, Madison, 27.2 million. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. The resident Aussie. Congratulations. Oh, it's feeling kind of international up here right now. Number six. <laughs> the Gold Bar team, Orange Beach, 29.7 million. Wow. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. I, you see? We're almost halfway there. We want to know who's number one. And now we have number five, the Crawford Willis Group. Over $39.4 million in production. I feel a funny video coming on. <laughs> there he is. Congratulations. Congratulations. This is for you guys. Oh. You want to hold it for us? No, no. <laughs> Congrats, y'all. And the number four team is the Hindon Team Decatur, 43.7. Right. Congratulations. Super Please give me some drum roll. We're getting to number three. Team Taylor, Birmingham, 59.1. Wow. Lots of cells. <laughs> Congrats. And the finalist, number two team is a Coof Weekly Group, Auburn, 73.2 million. It's eight cups. <laughs> I knew it. That's what he said. I, I like, knew it. <laughs> Congratulations. We can't have Alex Wong. Congratulations. <laughs> Come on in here. Say what you meant. You too. 
And y'all, they were also recognized today at their local board. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, I got named for uh, 10 years in the business. Oh, okay. <laughs> Akuf Weekly Group. Now you got it. And drum roll, please, for the number one team. Please, please, please. And give it up for Ghosty Gulas Group. Birmingham, 107.2. My goodness, Gosri, are you going to Lisbon, uh, Portugal in, in, in June? Whatever we need to do. There you go. <laughs> You're paying, right? Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Love you. Uh, now we have to, uh, the next half is uh, top 10 teams sold by transactions. Let's see who are they. Number 10. The Gold Bar team, Orange Beach, 69 closings. <laughs> Number nine, Red Camellia Group from Pell City, 73. Let's see. Barb, uh, Barb Turville couldn't be here today. She is also a flight attendant. And uh, so she was flying today. Okay, continuing with the program, number eight, the Holman Group, Huntsville, Madison, 81 closings. <laughs> number seven, Taylor Jackson Real Estate Group, Trostville, Alabama, 82 closings. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> number six, Birmingham Investment Group, Birmingham 96 closings. So Rob is not here. Not here either. Number five, Crawford Willis Group, Auburn 117. That is a lot of closings. Where is the Crawford team? Congratulations, <laughs> congratulations again. <laughs> Number four, Tim Taylor, Birmingham, 158. <laughs> yes, look at <laughs> Number three, the Hindon team, Decatur, 189. And we're getting to the number two. Number two is a Kuf. A Kuf. I know it's A. I just want to mess with them. I just want to mess with them. A Kuf Weekly Group from Auburn. 222 closings. That is a lot. <laughs> Congratulations. Did I get there? There you go. Congratulations. Thank you. And the number one drum rolls once again. Let's see who it is. Ghosting Woolas Group. 390. Now you know who's paying for the trip. I gotta have it for my photo. There you go. You want you want anything else? Well, uh they just threw me under the bus. They said if I want to say anything else, and I always have something to say. At least that's what my <laughs> wife say. So I don't know if I'm going to if, I, if I'm going to say it's good or bad. But are you guys having a good time? Yeah. Can we get this room twice as much next year? Can we double it up? If we can work and try to do more sales, we can get more caper, more cappers, more icons. This room needs to be doubled. 
next year. I think we have enough information to go out and really sell, sell, sell. Other than that, you guys are being great. It's fun. Hopefully, we'll see you next year. Thank you so much, Freddie. All right, so again, we love our sponsors, and we got a few words from Meredith with Ally Property Inspections. <laughs> Yay, yay. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here to support you all at your award ceremony. Um, you guys helped us have our best year ever in 2023. So we really appreciate that. And as the owner of Ally Property Inspections, every day, honestly, my thoughts are, what can we do to make your jobs better and make your clients have an easier time deciding what properties to buy? So we really thank you. We covered Montgomery all the way up to the border of Tennessee. So. Um, please feel free to come visit us if we can ever be a help. We're back there. And just a couple other things. We just added our first bilingual inspector and there's several people in this room that um, have used him. And so this is just one more way in which we wanna help your clients have a better experience. And then last but not least, if you've ever heard of a 3D virtual reality inspection, if you haven't, we offer these now. Um, your investors that live out of the state or your clients that live out of the state and they're not here, this is something that can help them get a better idea about their house that they're buying. So come back and uh, talk to me about that. So thanks again and congratulations. All right, next up we got Matt Willis, who is no stranger to the stage apparently. Uh, to announce our top, what is Matt announcing? This, uh, what, what's his category? Domestic, domestic team. Top domestic team. Yes. Matt Willis, Auburn, Alabama. Yes. <laughs> oh, here, I'll do the same thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. So uh, there is so much talent in this room, and I just have to say that I am honored to be in this room and uh, work beside all of this talent. And so uh, let's go ahead and announce the top 10 domestic teams. Some say spouses selling houses. So uh, <laughs> coming in at number 10, we have Martha and Bill Givens from Montgomery with 4.6 million. Take it all in. <laughs> At number nine, Beach Life Real Estate, Orange Beach, with 4.6 million. Is Beach Life here? No. At number eight, Lynn and Mickey Berry, out of Birmingham. Number seven, Team Danifer out of Anison with 5.9 million. I know that they bought tickets, but. All right, number six, Mary Martin and Mackenzie Brown out of Birmingham. Side note, they weren't a domestic team for the whole year, even. <laughs> I know, right? At number five, your real estate fam team at of Orange Beach with 7.9. Congratulations.
At number four, Yizu Adahelena. At number three, is it the PFAB, Fabulous, <laughs> the Fabulous Real Estate at Orange Beach? They're so fabulous. <laughs> Coming in at number two, Cook and Associates out of Daphne. Match so nicely, too. They get best dress award. Yes, they do. And number one, where total sold volume is Chad and Jenny Beasley. <laughs> Hey, after seeing this list, we're changing it to Jennifer. <laughs> Congrats, y'all. Congratulations. So, top 10 in uh, transactions. Coming in at number 10, the fabulous real estate at Orange Beach. At number nine, Mary Martin and Mackenzie Brown. At number eight, Cook and Associates out of Daphne. At number seven, the Grant team out of Rogersville. Number six, your real estate fam team out of Orange Beach. Okay, number five, Lynn and Mickey Berry out of Birmingham. <laughs> At number four, Yizu out of Helena. Yay. And number three, Martha and Bill Givens out of Montgomery with 27. And Bill couldn't make it because he's on the golf course, right? At number two, Team Danifer out of Aniston with 28 transactions. And number one with transactions sold. Who could it be? Who could it be? Chad and Jen Beasley out of Birmingham with 37 transactions.
do like y'all are now officially Jennifer. <laughs> And give another round of applause for all the award winners. Great job, Matt. I will say it's pretty cool that EXP does that, the, the domestic uh, team setup that you can do so that um, uh, as a domestic team, meaning you're legally married, you can, if your spouse is a realtor too, you can combine under one cap and, um, you know, reduce fees. You don't have to pay two sets of you know the fees and all that sort of stuff and it's a great setup if a uh, husband and wife are selling together and it's, it's been great for jen and i so it's pretty cool yes, pretty cool benefit all right so we want to introduce um our commercial agent expert pam reeves come on up <laughs> Thank you, and thank you all for letting us uh, have a portion of your award ceremony to celebrate our commercial awards and top producers. And uh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. You were. I was just going to wait for you to read the oh. the top by volume. Okay. <laughs> the top. To, <laughs> Well, we've had some issues with our slides, so I thought it didn't get done. Our top 10 commercial agents sold by volume. Okay, number 10 is Glenise Johnson. And she's not here today. She's here. She's not here. Okay. Number nine, Scott Myers. Congrats. Number eight, Joey Lamaster. He's not here today. Number seven, Keith Andrews. Or as, as he likes to say, the Keith. Congrats, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Congrats. And number six, Manisha Minakar. And y'all don't even want to know what my car does when I'm driving and I tell my car to call Manisha Minakar. It's not pretty. <laughs> And number five, Marsha Wisenheit. She's not here. She's in Gunnersville, uh, is the area she works, Gunnersville, Jacksonville. And number four, Craig Shade. He's not here either. He's in the Montgomery Prattville area, actually. <laughs> he's just going by for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Number three, Amber Seibel, who's also not here. We love Amber. Number two, Tim Baker. And number one, Pam Reeves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ready for the next? Okay, the top 10 agents by transactions. Number 10, Keith Andrews. Note for next year, Jenny, we need better aisles. <laughs> <laughs> I should have told him to stay up there. I saw Keith looking for a, an opening. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yes. <laughs> Number nine, Amber Seibel. Again, she's not here. She was on. She was. She had a ticket, but I don't. I'm not sure why she didn't come. Number eight, Glenice Johnson. She's not here. Number seven, Marsha Wisenhunt. She's not here. Number six, Manisha Munikar. Number five, Joey Lamaster. She's not here. Number four, Craig Shade. Number three, Pam Reeves. <laughs> and Pam Reeves. Yeah. I think she's here. <laughs> she is here. Oh, that didn't get changed. Oh. <laughs> well. I just saw that. Yeah. We had them. <laughs> and number two, Tim Baker. Again, he's not here. Number one, Scott Myers. Thank you all for letting us join you in your awards and recognition ceremony. And um, we just wanted to remind all of you that EXP does have a commercial brokerage, and we would love to be your commercial resources for anything you need, any help you need with anything commercial. We would love to, to help you out. Well, Pam, we're always so appreciative of everything you do for our agents and, and being a resource for them all the time. So from presentations to valuations and co-listings, um, you, you've been a tremendous amount of help, so. <laughs> Thank you so much, so, yay, congrats to you. All right, Chad. All right, when is this? October, right? Yes, it's at the October. end of October, the, dates, the But the EXP Con is coming up. For those of you that have never been before, I really encourage you to go. It's a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of people. You get to learn and hear from the leaders of our company, kind of hear the heart of the company. Um, the first time I ever went to one, I had never been to any kind of real estate convention before. And Jen and I went going, okay, we're gonna try this once and just see if it's worth the money. I, I don't know about this. I'm, I'm skeptical. I don't know if y'all know that. But um, so we went and I was just blown away at you know, getting a sense of one, the hearts and minds of the leaders of the company and how they truly make decisions that revolve around us, the bigness of this company, and then just the, um, the collaboration that goes on and the, the agents that are out there producing that are presenting different things, people like Ricky and others that are pouring into us and helping us to be better agents and take things back home that we can learn and grow from. And so it's, it's a great experience. It's a lot of fun. We always turn it into a tax deductible vacation. Um, so I'm making sure my phone's off and the IRS is not listening. <laughs> but um, it's a lot of fun. I encourage you to go. And this is the first time in Miami. It's been in Vegas for the past few years. And uh, we're excited to go to a new place this year. Yeah, so excited. And they've really come a long way. Um, Clarence, Ebony, and I, we were in New Orleans um, for <laughs> one. And I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't I'm not so sure about this company <laughs> but they have turned their events into um, uh, so much better they they're perfecting them now I will um, say this that you know when you're irritated about something with the company because let's you know it, we're gonna have stuff on our list that we're not happy with and um, we're gonna have day-to-day -day things that um, tick us off or we don't understand this does help us get together and have an overall picture of the, the greater part of this company. Um, because no matter where you're with, you're going to have irritations and things that bother you from day to day or things that really tick you off um, that are really probably beyond your control. 
Um, but when you go to these big events and see the overall picture, I really think that it helps with your attitude and it helps you connect with so many other people and the company itself. So. And the closing parties are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's off the hook. Um, so you can use that QR code to go to the registration. Uh, tickets are available now. They've started opening up the hotels for the, uh, the blocks of rooms that they get at discounts for us and things like that. I wouldn't sleep on that too long because the tickets will sell out and the hotels will fill up. So um, <laughs> check it out. Yes, and they just announced. I'm sorry. So the meeting is not in a hotel. Right. So hotels are separate this time. Yeah, what she's okay. saying is usually in, in the ones we've been to uh, in the past have been um, in Vegas and the uh, convention center at one of the big hotels is where it is and so you can stay at the same place that the that the event is held this time it's there's a convention center with lots of hotels scattered out around it so it's not the hotel's not at the event center yeah but that just gets we get to be explore fun. more who's going to the keys afterwards <laughs> Let's go. I've heard keys. I've heard Mexico. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all live in Mexico. <laughs> and they just announced the international one is going to be in Portugal. So, I mean, if anybody needs a tax. That's in June on my birthday if anybody wants to take it. <laughs> I'll be happy to celebrate your birthday in Portugal. <laughs> So um, now we want to introduce our friend and uh, uh, Alabama leadership member, um, Natalie Bass from Auburn. Welcome. Hey, y'all. I'm the last one. Um, the next group we're going to introduce are folks that have utilized one of the optional ways that we can make revenue, and they have exponentially grown their company. So let's, um, let's do it. Number 10, Carlin Carruth. I know. <laughs> you might as well just sit up here for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to love this. She's gonna Number 9, Evan Crawford. I think, I think they escaped. I think Evan just walked out. Okay, you mean to take that point? Did he leave? Yeah, I, I think know, so. Yeah, I know, I know they had a Matt had to get to a basketball game. Yeah. With his kid. Number eight, John Riddle. He's not here, but not yeah, John. Woo. Number seven, Chad Beasley. I think he's here. And Jen. <laughs> Jen does more for this than I do. Yes, I should have had her on that slide. Why didn't y'all correct me? <laughs> Sorry. Number six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Rick Caruth, Sr. Ricky. <laughs> I told you you just needed to hang out. Number five, Clarence Graham. Yay! Woo -hoo -hoo. And Ebony, and Ebony. Ebony, come on up. Hey, I've got a Sharpie, I'm gonna fix mine. <laughs> Ebony, come up. Congrats. Number four, Russell. Col okay, I'm just going to say Kalu. I don't know. Kalau. Kali. It's Kali. Kali. There you go. Kali. Yeah. Russell Kali. Um, he actually said he was going to come, but um, I don't. I don't think he ended up getting a ticket. Yeah, he was in Oxford. Number um, three, Gusty Gulas. Guess who had to be back in Birmingham? All right, number two. Oh, that'd be you. Congrats. <laughs> Number one. And number one. Who do y'all think it is? Last award of the day. Who do you think it is? <laughs> Ricky Carew. Congrats, man. Congrats. Thank y'all. So 
one thing I think you'll find interesting is that um, rev share is a real thing. And uh, I don't think that um, you and I go around having revenue share breath um, no. because we're in it to really help the agents. And I'm sure you don't either, Ricky. Um, and it's, it is such a blessing that's available to every single person in this room uh, if you want to pursue that. Only 12% of the company actually has a revenue share. So that is such a low percentage of um, people with this company. And I would love for more people to get involved with that and see the benefits of it. Because um, yes, it can be a, a little bit of work, but um, at the same time, it's such a huge blessing. And it, it, it enabled me to step away from sales last year. Um, and uh, I'm very grateful, but now mama needs to sell a house. So um, I need all your referrals before March 16th, because that's when Jacob gets married. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will say it? on that, well, it, I mean, I agree with you. It is a real thing. A lot of people think, you know, hey, I don't want to fool with that. I don't, I don't understand it. It's not real. It's, it's not re really going to amount to anything. Well, at our house, it's like having another person in the house bringing in a really nice salary. And that's really helpful in a year like last year when the market was down and we didn't sell as much, frankly, as we normally do. So it really can help smooth out the bumps. Uh, it can do a lot of things and it's, I'm, I'm grateful for it. So don't think that you can't do it. You can, there are a lot of us that are here to help that if you don't know how to explain the company, there are a lot of us that would, would be happy to help you explain the company to people. Um, those of us that have experienced all the different pieces of it. Um, so reach out. <laughs> yes. All right, now it's time for door prizes. Did y'all collect them? Right. So what's our... Uh, Jay's bring them. Jay's got them. Yeah. We got some more and... Uh, She's putting you to work now. Top secret. Thank you, ma'am. Um, These have been audited by Ernst & Young. <laughs> He's bringing a, so while he's bringing that, um, there is one thing that I want to say. Somebody did not get mentioned today, and um, she sold 46 transactions last year. And uh, I don't know how the numbers that I got from corporate um, uh, fell the way that they fell, but um, y'all, please give Tanya Lee a hand. She deserves to be up here. Please stand up. Stand up. Forty-six second-year agent. I mean, come on. <laughs> so are, you, are you drawing from the stack? How are we doing? What are you yeah. doing? Did, did you have a? Did you have a bag? You had a bag over there. Jason. Yeah. Man. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Can you stick here and draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right, Tanya, you here, you pick one. I'm going to put them where you can't see the names. Harold Collins. Harold. Here you go. So what, are, these their, uh -oh. are these their actual lists? We need to give them back to them? Here's your list oh, back. Yeah, you need it. <laughs> Uh, Angela, who we got? Kelsey Crump. Yay! She gone? Did she leave? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll have one over here for you. All right. Here, put this in on hers or something, and we'll give that back to them to give her to. Okay. Reach in and draw. This is the bolt flip the switch by Coach Burt. Right now, you probably need to activate your prey drive because, um, like Ricky said, it's a year that we need to get back to work. Travis Ellsworth, come on up. Yay! And here's your list of gold. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, um, here, here's her list. Kristen Sutton. Woo! Kristen probably has this one. <laughs> But you can gift it to someone else. <laughs> someone you love. Yeah, if you'll. 
Draw again. I feel like I'm playing Uno. Draw again. Draw two. Tim Huddleston. Yay! Okay. I'll take that one. Okay. Probably just keep on. You're welcome. Thank Hit you. Me again. <laughs> Rebecca McCalman. Mary Harmon Young. Yeah, you just keep calling. All right, to make it go faster, I'll just pull from the middle. I'm not looking. <laughs> Sheila Ponell. Yay! Just throw it at her. Always a, always a winner. <laughs> Name inside? Oh, they don't have all yeah, those filled out. Cindy Ioimo? Ioma? I almost got it right. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Yeah, I don't. Allison Goldbrick? Is that it? Is that the end? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And? Um, what are we doing with these for people to get their list back? I told them to take pictures of them. Oh, okay. So they have All right, cool. Yeah. All right, so this is, again, if you didn't scan this already for um, feedback for uh, other events that we can plan, um, a, a survey, if you would. Um, I gave it earlier, but just in case. So um, we just want to thank y'all so much for being here and for attending today. Congratulations to all the award winners. Yeah, this was great. Great turnout. Thank y'all all for being here. And like Jenny said, congratulations on all your success. I fully expect, like Freddie said, for 2024 to be much better and for us to have a lot more awards to give out next year. Yes. Congratulations, everybody. Y'all have a safe trip home. <laughs>